put that. Okay, there we go. OMG, wow. That was a hot ass mess. Okay. Okay, we're good now. <laughs> good lord. I am so sorry for that. Jesus. Like, <laughs> my slow ass computer. Oh, I need another one. That, and I grossly underestimated the amount of time I needed to repair for this, so I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> fuck me. At least I'm here now. Um, don't switch. Move! Stupid ass notifications! Oh my god, my computer is so shit. Oh my god, I need a new one. This one's busted anyway. I dropped it like an idiot once. Oh my god. Discord, what are you doing? I need to announce the stream. <laughs> oh lord, okay. Fuck it. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, Discord, what? It's like, I don't want to switch to a new device. Come on, Discord, work with me, not against me. Could someone else just announce the stream for me, please? Discord's being an ass. <laughs> someone else just announce it for me, please. <laughs> okay. All right, uh... Jesus Christ, it's it's just not responding. See, like, I hate how this is all going wrong. What's going on with my computer? I'm gonna have to just X out Discord and open it up again. Just, damn. It's, it's just, I fucking hate Discord. Not Discord. No, Discord wasn't the, the Discord isn't the issue. My computer is. Um, okay. I said I. Oh my god. It it won't get off the screen. Uh, someone else announce the stream. Just someone else do it. <sighs> okay. But anyway. Um. Let me... Okay. Shut up, phone. Anyway, hi, everyone. I am Team Roller 15 uh, and today we are going to talk about how I record and stream my videos. Because... Oh, you did, Blue? Oh, thank God. Yeah, like, Discord just wouldn't let me announce it. <laughs> Fuck. But anyway, welcome. Welcome to my presentation where I teach you all my recording and streaming secrets for all of you who want to be YouTubers, gaming YouTubers one day, streamers, recorders, whatever. Well, recorders, is that even a word, a, a proper word to use here? Probably not. Whatever. Basically, any anyone who wants to start uh, streaming and recording videos on, gaming videos on YouTube, I'm here to help you. Okay. So, let's get started. All right. Now. The first thing we should do is you should ask yourself exactly what kind of content you need. What kind of content you're going to create, publish, whatever. What kind? Do you want to stream your games or do you simply want to record? There are some people who just do only streaming and some people who just do only recording. I was once in both categories, but now I do both. Um more streaming than recording except now because i'm taking a break but anyway just ask you oh hold on i forgot to close that window my bad okay go away discord so ask yourself those types of questions because well actually before i go to that point let me get to the go to the next point do you want to use a face cam or do you want to go faceless that's another question that you want to be asking um, do you, are you, are you comfortable with putting yourself out there or do you just not want to do that? Because either method's fine, but again, you need to ask yourself this question. Or, do you want to have commentary or no commentary? Again, important. Uh, these, and I say these are, this is important because these are the, these are the types of questions that you're, that are going to dictate. These are the types, types, I can't speak today. These are the types of questions that are going to dictate what equipment you should use. 
they'll determine exactly what equipment you should use. So do you want to have commentary or no commentary? Are you comfortable with talking to people? Do you want people to hear your voice? Or do you, are you just like, no, my voice is ugly. I don't want to do it. Or maybe you just don't like doing commentary, period. So that's another important question to ask. And another important question is, well, do you want to use a green screen like me nowadays? Or do you want to use no green screen? That's fine, too. It really does not matter. But again, you'll need to know that question. And are you recording or streaming from a console with AV input or from a console with HDMI input? Because the capture card you're going to use depends largely on that. So these are the types of questions you should be asking yourself because they'll, they because A, they're going to determine what type of content you're going to create and B, because they're going to, because the equipment you need depends on these questions. So make sure you go into your, into your YouTube account knowing exactly what you want to do. And of course, it's okay to be flexible and sometimes do commentary and sometimes not do commentary, sometimes stream, sometimes record, sometimes use a green screen, sometimes not, stuff like that. You don't have to stick to just one style. You can mix it up sometimes. But even so, if you really want, if you really don't want to do certain parts at all, you need to figure what, out what that is before you start getting what equipment you want. Um, and yeah, that's another thing too, Blue Wolf. You should also ask yourself. Here, let me actually type that in. I I for, I didn't even consider that. Uh, let me type that in really fast. Are you going to do long plays or segmented playthroughs? That's another good question. I can't fucking type today. And let me. Uh, and the last one is Okay. Those are there those are two other questions you should be asking yourself. So are you going to do long plays or are you going to do segmented walkthroughs? And if you don't know what a long play is, it's a playthrough where someone plays the entire game in one sitting. Um, and of course, long plays can be split up into parts, but even so, that's only because it would be a lot to just, it would take a lot of effort to just put, like, upload that single video. So sometimes people find it easier to record, uh, to edit long plays, like separate them into parts before uh, uploading them. But with long plays, you do the entire game in one sitting. And I think I did that only once. I think I, I did a long play only, actually, no, I've done a few long plays that were streams. Mirror's Edge Callus was one. I did that one in like eight hours. Never again, God. And Sonic Colors I did in one stream too, as well as Song Generations. Those would technically be long plays, but I consider, I really prefer to call them streams though. But yeah, with long plays, you just do everything in one sitting. Whereas with segmented playthroughs, you, you just, you just uh, play the game in parts. You don't do it all in one sitting. Um, and that can be easier both mentally and physically. Like if you're playing a very intense action game, and your fingers are going to be hurting quite a bit if you do it all in one sitting. But in segments and playthroughs, you don't have to worry about that. Your fingers can take breaks. Of course, there's the as there's the of course there's also the aspect of you know commentary. Are you going to commentate everything in one sitting, or are you just going to do it in parts? Again, the latter's easier on your voice especially if you know how to keep your voice healthy while you're talking for long periods of time. But but some people want to do long plays. It's, it's There's something wrong with doing long plays. It's just that if you're going to do them, just be prepared. Uh, just make, just be, it's plan, it helps to be prepared. So that way you don't, you know, push yourself too hard. Um, but again, these are all questions that you should be asking yourself. And of course, do you want to be a completionist? Are you going to like complete the game 100% or not? And this is actually going to tie into a point I'll comment on later in the presentation. 
But again, do you want to be a completionist or do you want to just go to the main game? Again, either approach is fine. The latter approach is easier, but the former approach will give you more content. So really, there's no single right or wrong way to do these things, but these are the questions you should be asking yourself so that you know exactly how you want to structure your videos and your content. It's better you decide now than later because you don't want to spend a shit ton of money on some on equipment that you're probably not even going to use. So let's go to the next slide. So before we even talk about equipment, let's talk about and this is what I was mentioning earlier about how I was gonna this tie, how what blue uh, blue will suggested tied into a point a point I was going to discuss later. This is that point. So let's talk about a few things. So first we should probably define what a playthrough, a walkthrough, and a let's play are. So, no, this there's no final exam, Blue Wolf. Don't be silly. No, I'm just kidding. But um, there really isn't gonna be a final exam. I'm not really gonna, t imagine if I had a course on this. <laughs> but anyway. A playthrough is a video series where someone like just plays through the main game and that's it. They don't do anything else. Um, like say you're playing an RPG and you're not going to do any side quests. You're just going to focus on only the main quests. That would be a playthrough. Um, a walkthrough is different though. A walkthrough is intended to help people beat a game, like complete a game. So, and it may or may not be 100%. Maybe the walkthrough will cover most things about a game, but not everything. Or maybe it will cover just about everything. It really depends on what the uploader wants to do. So, yeah, but a walkthrough is intended to help people play through the game. Like, you know, help them get upgrades or beat levels or anything like that. It basically shows them how to play the game. Um... Oh, hi, Nine. You were here earlier, I believe. So, that's a walkthrough. And it, it's intended to be like a strategy guide. It's, a, it's essentially a visual strategy guide. So, you, so you, just saw, see someone else, you just see someone else play the game and then, and then you just do what they do. And then, boom, you beat the game. And a let's play, a let's play is... Uh, it's a video series where someone adds commentary to what they're playing. And and it can be and and there's there are two types of commentary. You can have live commentary or post commentary. I've done both, but uh I don't think I have any videos on my channel that are post commentary. I think I think all of them are live commentary. I do I did I did at one point upload my first Let's Play of Tomb Raider Chronicles, and it was not very good. It was my very first time, so I mean, of course, I'm gonna have to. I mean, of course, like it's it's I'm not. I wasn't expecting it to be great, but it was just so bad, and I was so embarrassed. Like I tried to do live commentary at first, but then I switched to post commentary halfway through the game, and it was just like, uh, and I was like, this is all so bad. Let me just delete it. Ugh. And DBZ knows which one I'm talking, what that one was. He knows it. <laughs> but basically, live commentary is when you, it's when you play the game and talk about it at the same time. Post commentary is when you, it's when you uh, play the game first, but then you go back and watch your recording and then you talk over it. And they both have advantages and disadvantages. So with live commentary, um, you actually get to react to the game or, inter or interact with the game in real time. So, 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 you, so you tend to have like funnier or more surprised reactions. So it's like, because you don't know what's coming essentially. Unless you played the game multiple times before, but even then you can't possibly predict everything. So it just tends to, like, you're just actually interacting with the game in real time. But the problem with that approach is that a potential problem, I'm saying it's a potential problem because it, it's not necessarily an issue, but it can be, is that 
sometimes it might be hard for you to think of things to talk about so you're just sitting there in dead silence and that might cause your viewers to get disinterested and and then your video might just be like <laughs> If you if you if you're not if you don't talk a lot, then it'll show throughout your entire video, and it and it might make your video seem a bit boring. And then on the other hand, you have post commentary. So the advantage to that is that you could actually think about what you want to say. It's easier to think about what you want to say and say it. Like you could definitely plan what you want to say in advance and practice it as many times as you want. Although the downside is that you you're not going to be able to play the game in real time. So it's going to be a little bit harder to like it's just it's just it just doesn't feel as you know like when someone interacting with a game in real time like you actually get to see their reactions in real time but with post commentary you don't really get that um although you can although you can still have reactions of course but with with um lot with live commentary you get more of those so that's the difference between live commentary and post commentary. They both have advantages and disadvantages. I've done both. I used to prefer post commentary, but now I prefer live commentary because I just got better at it over time. Again, the first time I did it, it was very bad, uh, which was to be expected, but then I got better at it over time. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, I don't think I've ever, I honestly, I, the, the moment I started doing live commentary again, I don't, I, 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 I don't think I ever wanted to go back to post commentary. Honestly, it's, it just doesn't fit my style anymore. But anyway, that's the difference. So Let's Play can be either. And now the thing is that, excuse me, Let's Plays can be appealing to some people, but not to others. Some people don't want a game to be commented, com commentated over. So th they just don't want that. I've, I've had my fair share of comments where people are like, thank you for not commenting on this game. Like, they just preferred to have no commentary. But there are people who actually prefer commentary. So, um, so when I first started, I didn't have commentary. So some people... Some people, of course, were not going to be very interested in my channel because, again, no commentary. Um, it depends. Like, I do commentary pretty much all the time now, Ex except in like isolated, uh, except in isolated like videos, like just small videos where I just show some snippets of gameplay. I don't do commentary on that, unless it's text commentary. But even then, I don't do much of that. That's also another thing, text commentary, but. That that that's really falls under uh, editing, so I, I don't really consider that much, uh, like, um, like that's not really I don't really consider that style of commentary. But anyway, so that's so a let's play can be entertaining to some but not to others, and it, and so don't be don't be discouraged if your style of doing things doesn't appeal to someone else. You can't please everyone. Don't try. Don't bother trying. So just pick a style and stick with it. Or if you want to mix things up, that's fine. It does not matter. But that's basically the difference between all three. And sometimes people will inter sometimes people will use these interchangeably. They'll use these interchangeably. So they'll call a so they'll call well of course a let's play can't be used with no interchangeably with no commentary, obviously, but some people will consider playthroughs and walkthroughs the same thing. Some people will consider walkthroughs and let's plays the same thing. It, it's, you know, it, it, it's, there's no really strict definition for these. These are just how I define the terms. Um, so there's that. And another thing is that a let's play can either be a playthrough or a walkthrough. So, so it can be either. Um, someone could just be playing through the main game. Or someone can just be like doing pretty much everything in the game. I've done both approaches. I've done all three of these approaches really. Um, so it really just depends on your style. There's no single right way of doing things. But I just need to make it clear as to what these terms mean. So that's that. Now let's go to the next slide. It's amazing how even after I have an outline, I still sound so disorganized. I don't know. 
<laughs> my mind just go. My mind is just all over the place now. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, let's talk about different approaches to not different approaches. I'm sorry. Like different types of equipment you'll need for whatever approach you want. So we're gonna talk about. I really. I wish. I wish I'd made a slide about this first. Uh, you know, what? it's okay. So there are basically like. Um, I guess, yeah, let's see, capture card, webcam, mic. Yeah, four, four, pieces of, four basic pieces of equipment you need. Uh, if you're like me and just want to, you just want to do everything. You'll need a good capture card, a microphone, of course, a webcam or face cam, whatever, and if you want, a green screen. So, let's start with recording, like so, the capture card. Okay. So, if you want to record games, and please don't do this. Please never do this at all. Just don't do it. Don't point a camcorder or webcam or video camera or whatever at the TV. Don't do it. This isn't 2007. Please don't do that. It just looks awful. It looks bad. It just looks so unprofessional. It does. And for various reasons. And I know because I used to do this. Like prior to 2010, all my videos were recorded like this. And I was like, wow, these all look like shit. Let me delete them all and get a capture card. And then I did. Um, my Dazzle DVD Recorder Plus, that was the first capture card I had that could record AV just fine. Um, and I think Sonic 2006, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 was the first game where I started actually using the capture, that capture card uh, to record games. Though I did record with, uh, do a little small video with Super Smash Bros. Melee first. I did a test with that first. Which is still up, but anyway, that's beside the point. But basically, I just wanted to show you how, tell you guys how I used to do things with a camcorder webcam, and then I switched over to a capture card. And thank God I did. Seriously, do not point a camcorder at the TV. It looks so bad for various reasons. For one thing, the quality won't be good. It will. It will just be shit. Another thing is that you have background noise to to worry about like like someone could be talking in the background or in another room in the house and they might not have their doors closed or whatever or there might be noise outside your house or don't don't do that please just don't do it and another thing that is also worrisome is the lighting you have to worry about the lighting which can be a bitch to do when you're recording shit with when you're recording your games with the with the webcam because if your broom's too bright, that might fuck up the quality. Like, you, your, your viewers might not be able to see what's going on on the TV. Or you, you turn off the lights and then... And then you, and then now, it, now it's, the TV's too bright and they still can't see anything. It's, it's a bitch to do. And of course, you have to worry about getting sound from the TV, which can be... Which can also sound very bad. Even if it is a high quality webcam, just please don't do it. Just you get a capture card. Don't use a webcam. If you can if you can avoid it, just don't use a webcam. I know some people don't have money for capture cards or whatever. I understand, but please, oh please, save up and do not use a webcam to record your videos. Please. Just please don't do it. Because I remember that all these issues being an issue, uh, sorry, all these being issues for me back in, back when I had it, when I used the webcam. And the one, the webcam I used back then was different from this one. But, um, yeah, so it's like, ugh, I need a capture card because capture cards just make everything so much easier. You don't have to worry about background noise or anything like that. So. Get a good capture card, preferably one that's budget friendly. You don't want to blow too much money on a capture card. 
when a, a less expensive version will do just fine. It depends on exactly how much you want to invest, but really you shouldn't have to pay that much regardless. And of course, you want to make sure that your capture card supported on your PC. See, I wanted the Elgato HD capture card, the HDMI capture card. Um, but unfortunately, my computer just couldn't run it. It wasn't powerful enough. So I had to go and look for a different option, which I'll talk about later. Actually, no, it's down there on the screen, actually. So, yeah, make sure that your capture card is something that your computer can actually run and use. Um, if, if not, then you pretty much just wasted your money. It helps to do more research on your, it helps to do research on the capture cards you want before you actually buy them. You should really do this with any product you buy if you want to, rec if you want to start streaming. Just do your research first and make sure it's the stuff you want and the stuff you'll need. Yeah, I've watched YouTube evolve over time. I've been here since 2008. No joke. Like, I feel so old and so experienced at the same time. Although there's still one part of my streams I'm always struggling with. I've gotten everything else down except this one part, and I hate it. But I'll talk about that later. Um, but anyway, make sure you get a good capture card. Budget-friendly. You don't need to spend that much. I spent like ninety not ninety nine dollars on mine. I don't remember, but it was a, under a hundred dollars. I was it a hundred twenty. I honestly don't remember. It was like a hundred. It was a hundred, I think, somewhere there. But it was not very expensive. Um. And of course, the what you want to record from is also important. Like, are you recording from a console with only AV input, like a Nintendo Wii? I think it's a Wii cable with HDMI. I don't know, but anyway, or like a Nintendo GameCube. You want to record from that, or do you want to record from something like a, from something like a PS4 or an Xbox One or an Xbox Series X or S? So, yeah, the console you want to record from also matters because some capture cards. I'm not sure if there are any capture cards that are both AV and HDMI, but there are capture cards that are AV and capture cards that are HDMI, so that's going to be quite important for you to know. Um, I have one. I have one um, that I have. I have two. I have both kinds. I have one that's AV only and one that's HDMI only. So. My Dazzle DVD Recorder Plus, which I've had since 2010, and it still works to this day. Um, that was what, that's what I've been using to record things for my 360, Nintendo GameCube, PlayStation 2, all that stuff. Um, and that's that's a cord that's a card I've always been using. Though I honestly think I should get another one, but I don't know which one to get. I feel like there are better options out there. Probably like I think the HD PVR, not the second one, the first one, the very first one, might be a better fit. But I don't know. I just my dazzle my dazzle is decent. It can record up to 720p. Um, the stream might have lagged. It might have. That's uh, that's what su that's what happens when you have shitty internet. Um, and my HDMI capture card, it's Eliclive. That's what it's called, Eliclive E60 Pro HDMI capture card. Um, and I'll show you pictures of how these capture cards look and how I how they how I set them up as well. Don't worry, I took pictures of those. Um. That's the HDMI capture card I got, and it's very good. I love it. And Tanman also recently got his as well. Um, he asked me. He asked me like what a week or two ago, like which HDMI card I use. I I linked him to that one, and he loves it. He has it now, and he loves it. Um. So, yeah, basically those are the cards I use. Uh, that's my HDMI capture card, and that's my. AV capture card. Both of them are pretty good. Of course, there are, of course, they're not the most powerful capture cards out there, but they're both quite good. Particularly the HDMI capture card one. This one's good. I like this one because it can record at 1080p and 60fps. Some capture cards can record only at 
720p and 60 fps or 1080p and 30 fps but not 1080p and 60 fps which is a disappointment for those of you who really really want that quality and that frame rate but the one i have can do 1080p and 60 fps so it's a it's it's a good capture card it's it's not as expensive as elgato so if you want a cheaper option that's still quite good then get that one and of course i have all my equipment linked in the description except for the green screen i cannot remember where i got that from i'm sorry i don't even remember i don't remember what it's called or what i did with the i don't remember it sucks uh but it's a collapsible green screen and i'll talk more about that later okay so those are my capture cards so again, invest in a capture card, please. Don't use a fucking webcam point at your TV that looks like trash. It's ratchet. It's not, again, it's not 20, it's not 2007. Please, get with the times. Anyway, if you can. Because back then, that's what people had to do because capture cards didn't exist until then. Uh, like, yeah, they didn't exist at the time, I mean. But, but like, within a few years, they capture cards were... A thing so people are like yay now I don't have to use shitty quality but anyway let me talk more about capture cards so you of course you can't have just a capture card itself otherwise you won't be able to record anything you have to have certain equipment with it so okay so for AV capture cards if you're gonna use an AV capture card you'll need an RCA cable you know a composite cable like one cable that's like uh white yellow and red on one side and white yellow and red on the other you'll want that and it's preferable that you have a long one uh short ones they just limit they just limit, they just limit how far you can uh take your, have your capture card away from your from your from your console so and your tv so try to have a long uh, RCA cable, preferably. Um, or, or if you have, or if you're, um, or if you're recording with something like the original HD PVR, you can use a component cable, a double-sided component cable, which I have, but I never use. <laughs> I just don't use it. Um, I, sh I really should use it more often, but I don't. Plus, Daz my Dazzle doesn't support that, unfortunately. I'd have to get something else. I really should get a new AV capture card. I think I'm going to look into that. My my friend Blue Wolf has been met, has been uh, urging me to, but I've been, I've, I've been trying to look, but I haven't been successful. Um, but yeah, if you haven't uh, have uh, a capture card that can record com with component cables, it has com component input, like you know the green red blue shit whatever then that all that's you'll want that too like that's even better than standard that than the standard uh composite cable um so yeah you'll need so regardless of whether or not you're using components input or composite input whatever it's called uh make sure you get the right cable and it has to be double-sided. One that will go into the capture card and one that will go into your console. Right? Wait, no, I'm sorry. I'm, not, I'm thinking about that wrong. No. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm sorry. One that goes into your, I'm sorry. One that goes into your capture card and one that goes into your TV. And you get that RCA cable and then the other cable, the console cable, the cable that, you know, where your console connects to the TV that one, that, that part will also be connected to the capture card. And I'll show you what this setup looks like in a bit, but you'll need that. Okay. Um, yeah, like, I really should get a new one. I have a component cable, but I don't use it. Sad face. And my TV that I use here can support that. I mean, obviously, it's an HD TV, but some HD TVs don't even have that shit anymore, so that's a disappointment. Uh, but anyway, you'll also need three Y splitters. 
If you don't know what a Y splitter is, it's this little th it's this little cable thing that allows you to reroute it not not reroute, I'm sorry. It allows you to split a signal into two different routes. Into so like here, I have one right here. I know you can't see. I should have taken a picture of this, but I didn't. Uh, you have to Google it if you need to a better visual. But I have one right here. And basically what it does is it, it takes one signal here and routes it to two different signals. Or actually, I think it's the other way around in this case. I think it might be the other way around in this case. Well, however, how, whatever direction it is, basically it lets you just turn one signal into two or two signals, take two signals into one. And it, it essentially splits up the signal. So, I would show you my dirty ass room, but I, I don't know, for some reason I have absolutely, I can't switch over, like, for some reason I can't, like, fucking live stream on this, on my fucking phone, like, switch over from this to my phone. I, I tried to do it, but I couldn't. It sucks. I have to do it as part of a different stream. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is what a Y splitter is. And you'll need that because, again, you'll need like three of these. Because one, like three, like, okay, so, yeah, hold on. So, um, let me grab, let me grab the other two. Okay. So with this shit, right, you have these three, like one, two, and three. Oh, shit. Three. Like, see, one, two, and three. So you, you put, like, for each one. So one will be, like, one will have, like, the video input. So two yellows, one from the RCA cable and one from your console cable. And then this one will be like for red, so it's like, um, so it's like two like like two red cables. So you put in the red uh, cable from the console, and then the red cable from the RCA cable. And then this one would be like white, so you put the two white cables in. You see how it works, right? And then like if this is white, then you put that into the dazzle, or whatever. Uh, capture card you have like you put into the white port uh, the red goes into the red and the yellow goes into the red I have to see I have to take the face cam and then like that's so ratchet though I have to literally take the face cam and then pull it out and then because it's mounted to my TV and then I have to like drag it everywhere that's so ratchet though <laughs> I might have to do it though um, so you need those and, and someone asked this earlier in the chat again. Okay. So the, the, what kind, what kind, what kind of ends you have on your Y splitter matters quite a bit. This is the male end is the one with the pointy thing sticking up. I don't really need to explain why it's called the male end. Do I, but and why this is called the female end for that matter. The female end has the holes, the male end has the, the thing sticking up. So, so each of these, the ones I have are like, one, the, the, the single end is male and the double end, the two ends, the, uh, the two other ends are female. They're female. So, yeah, that actually matters quite a bit. Now, if you want to use like, now see because to me this is literally the simplest setup you could do. Like one male end, two female ends for the Y splitters. That's the simplest setup you can do. If you want to do it the other way around, you can. But that that that's just that'll end up and that'll result in such a complicated setup if you try to go like two male, one female. Just just keep it simple and stick with this. I even forgot what that would look like, but. 
really, trust me. Just get three Y splitters, one male, two female ends. And I have other types of Y splitters too. There's this one here. Um, that there's no really no point in showing you guys if you can't even see it. I just have to go to the pictures. Um, but that this this one is like this one is like for audio purposes and strictly audio purposes. I'm not even sure if you can use it with video. I haven't even tried it. I don't think you can. But this one's strictly for audio, and you plug in like it has a white end and a white female end and a red female end. And and then it has a single male end at the top. Anyway. And of course you, um, now this is optional. Now, see, I put optional here because depending on the software, it might, your capture card might not be recognized. So, or at least the, or at least like the video for it or the audio for it. Like, see, I use OBS Studio and my Dazzle DVD Recorder Plus. It the the OBS Studio will recognize the, it will recognize, the, uh, the video input, but not the, audio input. Like it just doesn't re recognize the audio at all. So I don't get any audio from the Dazzle, and to f and to circumvent that issue, I had to go and get myself a USB sound card, which can f act as a separate audio source for my Dazzle. So all I had to do is literally just put in a Weisler there, another one, like the one I just showed you, the one with like the white and red ends, and then put another, and then put like the white splitter with the like, white cables in one in the white end of the other white splitter, and then the red, the red white splitter end with the white splitter that had the red stuff coming into it. Um, so to get to finally get sound, whereas the yellow cables would just stay in the dazzle. And again, here, let me let me go ahead and go back to let me go to the pictures because it's a lot clearer if I just show you. So it's a lot clearer if I just show you. Um, this is how your setup would normally look if you didn't have to, if you didn't have to worry about the sound coming from the dazzle. So you can see now that you have two sets of cables, one RCA cable going to the TV and one console cable coming from your console, of course. And in this case, the gray cable there is coming from my Wii and the black cable is the composite cable going into the TV. And so, of course, you plug in yellow with yellow, put that into the Dazzle. Uh, red and red, put that into the Dazzle. White and white, put that into the Dazzle with these Y splitters. Um, so you can do that. Uh, and so, I don't know why I didn't bother showing what the Dazzle would look like, what it looks like, like, if you if you hold it up to your face. I did it with my capture card, but not with the Dazzle, wow. But basically the Dazzle has like four ports, white, red, S-video, and yellow, in that order. You can look it up online, you could just Google it if you're curious, but... Um, so, like, uh, you would put the whites, the white splitter with the white inputs into the white port, and so on and so forth. And of course, the Dazzle also had S video, which was slightly higher quality than composite, but I never used it, honestly. Um, I forgot S video was even a thing. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> I forgot it was even a thing. But yeah, this is how the setup would normally look. And if you and if you want to circumvent the issue where your Dazzle's audio would not be picked up by OBS, it would look like that. And you can see that that's just a really, it's a slightly ugly setup, but but like that that's that's a that's one way of doing it. So basically. You take you take out two of the Y splitters from the Dazzle, put them into yet another Y splitter, um, and then put that in, and then put the end of that new Y splitter, so the fourth Y splitter, 
into the sound card. And then that sound card can pick up your audio. Hopefully you don't have to do this with any other capture card, but I've had to do this with the Dazzle and it is frustrating. But it was the only, like, cause now you just have to use another source that could potentially take up resources on your computer, but that was the only way I could do it. Um, at least with OBS Studio. So it would look like that. Um, USB sound cards have other uses too. Like if your if your laptop sound card is fucked up and you need it and you want to just use if you don't feel like getting it fixed, I mean you could use a USB sound card to compensate for that. And I have mine right here. It's called a Sound I said Sound Blaster Play Three, which I linked in the description, of course. But um, I'll get to um, you know go back to the other oops other slide now but yeah that's how my setup would look okay yeah that's a lot of stuff I know and that's the annoying thing like if you want to stream you're gonna have to spend quite a bit it's it's you know the other dodge sometimes you have to spend money to make money that that would be the case here okay um but that's with that's only with AV capture cards though with HDMI capture cards, the it's all it's so much simpler. It's so much simpler. The the whole thing is so much simpler. All you really need is one HDMI cable for input and one HDMI cable for output. And and if you're and um you know the USB cable going from your capture card to your computer so that your computer could pick up what your capture card's recording, you'll need that too. Unless your capture card has like the USB thing like built into it. Like what, an easy cap capture card? That's I think that's one you know what? Oh, whatever. Basically some HDMI capture cards, you know, have like I think you don't have to actually have a separate USB cable for that. You can just plug it into your computer, I think, but I'm not sure. But anyway. Yeah, for HDMI capture cards the setup is a lot simpler. Okay, so and I, I don't know why I didn't do this for my dazzle, but here's what my HDMI capture card looks like on one side. You have the input and the output. I don't know why I didn't take a picture of the other side. I see that's another thing I should have done. Not because it wasn't because I was in a rush to, you know, get this finished as quickly as possible is because I just did not for, I just for, I just didn't think to do it <laughs> it sucks but that's that's the one side where you have the left the left is the you probably you probably can't see that but the left says in the left port says in and the right port says out so the in port would be like you know you just put in your the HDMI cable from your console into that the output port, the right port, you you take another HDMI cable and then plug that plug plug that into the output port here and then plug it that and then plug the end of, the other end of the HDMI cable to your TV. Simple. Really all you need are two cables for that. Um and here's how it would look. So I took a picture of that. So you can see that you have two HDMI cables, one coming from the TV and one coming from my console. In this case, it's my Xbox One console. They're both coming from those. Um, and that other USB cable, that's just for, for the capture card to be plugged into my computer. And another thing is that this capture card, next to that USB cable port on my capture card, there are also three ports one that says audio in, one that says audio out, and one that says mic. So with this particular capture card that I have, which again I linked in the description, you can actually plug in a mic to that uh, part of the capture card. So like if you have like a wired headset mic or whatever, or any other audio source or whatever, you could just plug that in and the capture card will capture that too. Uh, I don't really do that though. I, I just don't like doing that. Especially since I'm used to having all my audio sources 
uh, connected to my computer, not my capture card. But that's just one capture. That's just one thing about my capture card that one feature of my capture card that I've never used. Um, as well as the in for the as well for, you know, for the in and out uh, ports, I don't use those either. Honestly, I don't use any of those audio ports on my uh, capture card. Just the I really just do it use it for video and audio. It records audio too. You don't have to plug something into the capture card to have it record audio. It can do that by it's just fine with the HDMI cable. But cables, I should say. But yeah, that's how it would look. And now let's talk about Professor, what's your budget? Oh, I don't, I'd have to do the math. I'd have to go back and look at, I'd have to go back and look at like, just calculate everything because I spent quite a bit of money. I spent quite a bit of money on my equipment as well as money on video games in general. Like Jesus Christ, I'm afraid to even do the math. But I didn't, I, I didn't really spend a lot on expensive stuff. It's just something that I've accumulated over the years. It's not something I did all at once. That's stupid. Crispy as fuck hands. Oh my god, when my hands dry, they kind of were dry. <laughs> like if I clap, I'll start a fire. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay, um, I typically don't put lotion on when I'm in the house because I don't see the point. But when I go out, yeah, I put it on. I don't want people commenting on my cracked as fuck hands. It's like, Dude, your hands are so ashy. You're going to start a fire. But anyway. Um, so, um, that's... Another thing you'll need here is a USB extension cable, of course. Well, actually, no. I'm sorry. This is optional. I should say this is optional. Let me fix that. This should be optional. I like having colons. Let me put colons in there. Okay. So, and this is optional, but it helps. You can have a USB extension cable. So what this is, is that you you have you have one long USB cable. One end will just be a regular USB uh, end, but the other one will be like the kind of end that you stick another USB in, USB thing in. So, it's 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 extending, it's extending your USB connection, and there are some and like there are plenty out there that you can get. Then they're pretty inexpensive. You could get you could get some that are like three feet, six feet, ten feet, fifteen feet. I think it depends on however long you want the cable to be. I have two long ones and one short one, like one short one that's like only this long. And then two long ones. Um, one of the long ones is blue, and I have my face cam is con is I'm using that for my face cam connection actually. And another one is black, completely black, and I don't really use that one that much. Uh, unless unless I'm like recording with my Dazzle and I need to use the sound card then I just because the sound card like I, I can't really it's gonna be hard to plug that directly into the computer because I'd be tethered to the TV because the sound card is just so close to the TV so that's when I'd use the other extension cable but typically I don't have to because I do HDMI a lot now so I really only just use it for the face cam and not for the sound card for my Dazzle but yeah USB extension cables will make it so that you don't have to stand so close or sit whatever applies so close to the TV so yeah it's they allow for more freedom basically and of course if you don't have enough USB ports on your computer you could get a USB hub and what that is I can't really show you because I'm using it right now but actually there's another one I'm not using let me grab that Oh shit. But anyway, here it is. Okay. 
so what this is is something that lets you plug in multiple USB devices into oh shit I hope I didn't break anything into into like into one device here the, the USB hub and then you can plug that into your computer and then and then boom you don't have to worry so much about USB ports though the annoying thing about doing something like this is that just be careful with how many USB devices you plug into your computer because your computer might not like uh, the fact that you're putting in a lot of devices or several devices so just be mindful of how much your computer can tolerate uh, some computers can tolerate a lot of devices, no problems. Others, not so much. So just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, this one I have here is rather fancy. Um, I don't really use it that much, though, surprisingly. I don't know why. But yeah, um, I, I don't know. I just find the other one easier to use because with this one, you kind of have to plug it in and then use it. I don't know why I even thought buying it was a good idea. Though it has it has like seven though, and one of them is functions as a charging port for a USB device. So, I mean, it's not a bad device, but I just don't really need to use it that much. But yeah, get a USB hub like this, and you can, and you can you can deal with not having enough ports. Because some computers have like only two, some have three, like mine. Some have four, like my 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 cousin's laptop, Stephanie. You know her, like her laptop has only two. Mine has three, and my old one, my old computer, my Lenovo ThinkPad that I gave to my cousin Favor, Stephanie's sis younger sister, uh, that one has four. And it's actually quite good when it comes to USB device management. That was actually a good computer, but I needed to upgrade anyway. So, but yeah, like, if you're running out of USB ports, just find a USB hub. But be careful with how many devices you're going to use. Okay, so... As a black man, you need to understand one thing, Ash, right? Because that's, the, that's one downside to, being, to having a dark skin complexion. When you're ashy, it will show. If you're white, it really won't show very much. But if you're black, oof. Anyway. Calculate the many so that I know how much all this equipment costs in Malay currency. <laughs> you know, I think after the end, I think at the end of the, at the end of the stream, I'm gonna like, just calculate all the the costs, of, like just just add up everything, like, and see how much I spent over the years. Oh Jesus, Jesus. Okay. But yeah, that's one thing. Okay, so. Okay, so yeah, that's that's those are those again. The USB extension cable and the USB hub are optional. They you don't exactly need them if your lap if your computer has enough ports or if you don't need that many ports, and if you don't mind having or if you don't mind having your computer tethered to the TV, then good good for you. But I I cannot go without these. I, I need these. <sighs> but let me show you the setup again. Of course, this is this is how my setup would look like. How my setup would look, sorry. If if when you know if I didn't have to worry about dazzle audio not being picked up. And this is how it would look if I needed to get my dazzle audio picked up and for some reason it's not getting picked up. And that's how my uh, recording device looks, my HDMI recording device, um, on one, at one point. And that cable at the end, you, there's a cable dangling there. That's, that's, that's the USB-C cable that, com that comes from my, um, from my uh, cap, that's coming from my capture card. I just left it dangling. Um, which you can see, you can also see it here, as well as my capture card set up here. And normally I have, another thing I should point out, normally I have something like a, a magazine 
or a book or even a piece of paper underneath my capture card because because like my capture card tends to get hot when I record so I don't want it on the floor where it's just going to get even hotter it, I, that just makes me nervous so I always put something underneath it but anyway now let's talk about face cams face cams okay now face cam now if you don't want a face cam that's fine but for those of you who want one or for those of you who eventually want to do a face reveal um which i which i did i can't remember exactly when i did it but i know it was during one of my first live streams probably think it i can't remember exactly when i think it was sometime during the sonic sonic 2006 live stream or after it i can't remember it was somewhere around that time but yeah if you want a face cam i recommend getting one that can be that can be screwed onto a tripod or mounted on mounted to a tv i don't know if all of them are have both features but i know in the past uh uh, many of them did not. I would know because I, I used to have an old webcam, but I went and got a better one. Um, and don't, don't use your laptop's webcam. Please don't. It's bad. <laughs> don't don't use it. It'll, oh, God. I mean, some of them are actually good, but not. But, you know, why would you use them? Like, they're, they're, they're tethered to your laptop. They're just tethered right to your laptop, so you can't do much. But anyway, um, not, not to know a reason to get a face cam. It, like, like, here, let me type that. Here, let me type this. Oh, shit. Avoid laptop cams, please. I can't spell today. I said laptop. <laughs> laptop cams. Uh, now, if now obviously, if you're doing the normal video call, laptop cams are fine. But if you're streaming, no, you gotta do something better than that. So, I recommend getting a face cam that can either be that can be either screwed onto the a tripod or mounted to a TV. So, and the reason for this is that it, it just allows for more flexibility. If you're if you're recording something like Just Dance or Dance Central, you know those games where you're dancing, um, using a tripod would be kind of awkward because you you because you want you because you want you likely want the camera to be facing directly at you, but if you put the tripod in front of the camera, it's gonna make it hard to, to see like what what's on the screen and it's just awkward and you have to move a bit. No. Which is why just simply mounting your face cam onto the TV is such a good it's it's a good it's a good solution to that. But maybe you don't want the camera to be facing directly at you if you're doing something else. Maybe you want it to be at this angle or at this angle or any angle really. That's where the tripod comes in and would be very handy. So it's important to you know have a face cam that can that can be mounted or onto a TV or onto a tripod. So that way, if you if you need to move stuff around, it's easy. I normally actually just I actually started mounting my face cam to my uh, TV here pretty much all the time, except for when I'm doing rhythm games. Like you guys see some of those rhythm game videos I've been doing for Melody of Memory, you know that Kingdom Hearts game, and for Taiko no Tatsujin, you know uh, that rhythm game with the drums. I've been using the tripod for that, for those. Um, but yeah, like it really just depends on how you want the whole setup to look. You want a face cam that can that can pretty much let you do whatever you want. Um, and you want one that can record in high resolution, like 1080p, please. Uh, don't get one that has sh shitty resolution, please. Please don't, it looks awful. Especially if you have a video where you like, where you're not even like playing a game, you're just like the camera's just on you and you're talking. You're gonna need a good camera for that. <laughs> um, 
the one I have is the Logitech C920 HD Pro, and I've been using it for quite a number of years now. It's it's still a good camera, although for some reason I still struggle with getting the quality right on it. I'm just not good when it comes to resolution and quality. Um, I'm trying to get better at that though. I think part of it is because I try to record at higher resolutions, but my laptop just ends up throwing a fit, which might which means that I need a new one. I really do need a new computer. This one is just not doing it for me anymore. It's just sucking now. It was better back then, but yeah, it's just sucking now. But but yeah, it's a good webcam. Um So yeah, that's really all I can say about this. Oh, hey, just Dave, what's up? What's Poggers? Oh my God, hey, hey, what's up? Yo, I wasn't expecting you to be here. What is up? Yo, what? What? Hey, that is lit. Ooh, a phone channel because the floor is dirty as fuck. <laughs> it, it kind of is. I did vacuum it recently, though. Okay, but yeah, uh, if you're going to uh, like get get a face cam that rec that can record in like 10, 1080p. I don't know if the one I have records in 60 FPS though. That's something you'd have to look look up. Here, let me see if I can. Because I don't, I don't fucking remember. I think. I, I don't even remember if the one I have records in 60 FPS. Here, let me see. I think it can. I don't. Oh, well, maybe not. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think it could. I don't think it can. I mean. No, it doesn't. It records in 30 FPS. My bad. Yeah, so. Yeah, so if you so the webcam I have, it records in thirty FPS. It doesn't record in sixty FPS. So let, that's a that's something I want to warn you guys about. Um. So don't so before you buy my webcam, just note that it doesn't record at sixty FPS. Now I'm fine with that because I don't care about sixty FPS. I don't I don't record anything in sixty FPS. 30 FPS is fine for me. Although I eventually do want to start getting into 60 FPS, but my computer just can't handle recording at that frame rate, so I just never worry about it. Um, but, but yeah, like, just, just know that mine doesn't record at 60 FPS. It records at 30 FPS. There are some that record at 60 FPS, but mine isn't one of them. So if you want more something that records at 60 FPS, just do your research and look up, look for a different webcam, not not this one. Good thing I mentioned that because I don't want to disappoint people. Although the although the page that I linked to tells you it's 30 FPS, so it's not like I'm it's not like the it's not like I didn't exactly tell you. I just forgot that this doesn't record at 60 FPS. Okay, uh, so it's, let's see, let me adjust this, 1080p at 30 FPS. Okay. Okay, so. I don't think I, I might, actually, you know what, I, I don't know. I feel like my webcam's pretty... I'm not sure if I need a new one, because it's been pretty good to me so far. But, yeah, that's my webcam. Yay. Okay, let me go back to... Go back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Just Dave... Just Dave... Uh, posted... Uh, just posted something that's a good point. So yeah, 60 FPS is more important for games. For a webcam, you don't need it. Yeah, that's a very good point. I was thinking the same thing just now. Like, you don't need it for a webcam, really. You can, and it'll make your videos look smoother and cleaner. But 
it's really not that important. It's not the the contrast isn't as big as say recording at thirty and sixty FPS for a game. I mean, you'll notice a difference with the webcam still. Obviously, there's still a there's still quite a difference, but it's it's just not that important. But for gaming, yeah, you'll want sixty FPS if your computer can run it. But thirty FPS isn't bad. So to answer your question, nine. Oh wait. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. You asked a question earlier. You said your webcam is a Rapu webcam. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that is, honestly. I used to be a bit of a webcam connoisseur, I think. I don't know. Or maybe not. Because I've, ha I've really had only two. I don't even remember what the first one was like. It was, it was old and gray and shit. But it did the job. Uh, okay, so it says that, yeah, you're, you, it's okay, so you have a Rapu webcam. Uh, wait, no, am I looking at the right one? No, I don't think I'm looking at the right one. But the one I, I just selected is also 1080p at 30 FPS. Okay, okay, let's do. Rapu, I think it's C. Let's, let's let's just choose a random one. I'm looking at it right now. Hold on, because okay, Amazon. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's hard to, this one's, and the one I'm looking at is like, what is it, C200? It's like 720p. Um, hmm. Wait, why, that's confusing. Why does it say 720p and then 1080p? That's confusing as hell. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I'd have to look at the review, so I don't know much about that camera. But you can always just look up reviews of it. There's, I just saw a review in the search results, so just look at that. But I think it's like 1080p at 30fps. So if you have that, then that's fine. Or 720p at 30fps, that's fine too. You were about to sleep, but then you saw my stream. Hey, thanks. Oh, by the way, if he gets dia. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Now, ooh, now this is my favorite part. Ooh, let's talk about... Okay, well, first of all, to conclude what I was talking about here. So with face cams, just get a good one, do your research. Now, see, uh, another thing I should point out is that if you're going to do a lot of vlogging or, you know, a lot of podcast videos or stuff like that, then 60 FPS might be a good investment for a webcam, but if you're streaming, that's really not that. It's really not that important because it, the, most of the intention is going to be on the game rather than on the streamer. So especially when the streamer's ca uh, cameras, because the face cam is going to be small anyway, small enough to where it won't block the whole game. So it really depends on what you want to do. Anyway, does. But anyway, if my webcam doesn't satisfy you, that's fine. I might even consider getting a different one. But it does the job. I might consider getting a different webcam and giving this one to my cousin. But this one does the job just fine. Okay, now let's talk about microphones. Microphones in general. Okay. Mm. Microphones. So many types of microphones out there. So many. And I have plenty at my disposal right here. Ranging from a laptop mic to a webcam mic, that webcam mic that I haven't used in years, to a wired headset mic, to a wireless headset mic, to a USB mic, and to an XLR mic. So, what I recommend for those of you who want to stream or commentate, like not stream, but just record and commentate instead of streaming and comment. 
commentating or wants to do podcasts or hell do voiceovers or or uh, stuff like that voice acting whatever get a I would recommend getting a high-end microphone don't sell for a shitty microphone as I had two years ago just don't don't it, it please don't <laughs> this just people your microphone like the microphone I'm using right now is it's it's a high-end one and I love it it's it's just so good and it it's nice not to have shitty sound for once I I can't remember when I last got this this was re this is something I got fairly recently like several several months ago I believe it was when I test streamed what was it the Spyro trilogy the first game of the Spyro trilogy that's when I got my mic and I wanted to test it out or no actually no I didn't test stream it Actually, no, I did test stream it at first, but then it ended up becoming an actual stream because I'm like, uh, eh, might as well go all the way. <laughs> so that was the first game where I actually tested it. And you guys said that I sounded so much better. And I'm happy to hear that. I was happy to hear that. Um, but yeah, like get a high-end mic, like a high-end XLR mic or a USB mic. Um, now... I strongly recommend XLR mics. And the reason for this is that they're the ones that professionals tend to use, whether they be streamers or voice actors or musicians or, you know, like singers, whatever. Um, people who, who have podcasts or whatever, prof professional podcasters or whatever they're called, people tend to use XLR mics because they're just the best quality there is. USB mics, okay. In contrast, USB mics, they're not bad, but they don't really deliver as much quality as an XLR mic does. They're just, they're, they can be high-end. There are some that are high-end professional, like the Blue Yeti microphone, that one is high-end and professional. But the problem with USB mics is that they'll always have slight, at the very, at the very least, slightly inferior quality to XLR mics because the audio is processed differently from you from how it is processed in an XLR mic. It's just not as clean. Like there'll always be a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of static with USB mics, even on the high end ones. It's it's like because it's all like it's all goes into like one channel instead of multiple. So that's why that's why USB mics tend to be inferior because the quality can be very good, but it won't, it just, it just doesn't uh, compare to an XLR mic, even the high-end ones. The high-end ones are very good, but the XLR mics, those are the ones you really want. If you really want to invest in a good microphone, if you don't care that much about quality, but you still want something that's good, then yeah, sure, get a professional USB microphone like a Blue Yeti. But with an XLR microphone, you, you, you just get, there's, you just have more of a, you just have more of a benefit from those. At first I thought about getting a USB microphone. My friend Blue Wolf recommended that I get a, get, that I get a USB one, a, a really good one, like the Blue Yeti. But I was like, eh, you know, I, I, I wanted, I want, I don't really want to settle for th that kind of microphone. I wanted something that was, that was much higher quality. Like, I, cause, of course, they tend to be more expensive. XLR microphones tend to be more expensive, and I'll get into that in a bit. But, you know, they're just higher quality. So I wanted something that was going to be a, ver a better investment, and I found this microphone, which, again, I will mention in the description. And, well, and later in this presentation, too. I did both. Uh, let me check the chat. Oh, DBZ, remember his old microphone that used to beep a lot? Oh, yeah, and I still have it. I'm going to do I'm gonna do a demonstration with it. I'm going to do a demonstration with it. I still have it, and I'm going to do a demonstration with it to show you guys, like, the difference in quality between all these mics. But going back to uh, the different types of microphones, you have the laptop mics, of course. I already talked about this once, but I'll say it again. Yeah, the laptop mics, which are the absolute worst, 
don't fucking use them. They suck. They don't filter background noise very well. They're tethered to the computer and they they just sound poor qual they're just poor quality compared to all the other mics you can get. And then you have the webcam mics. I have a webcam mic. Honestly, I don't I can't really comment on how good these are. I don't think they're not very good. I know that much, but uh the, it's been so many years since I last used the one from this webcam right here. I used I used the mic for the for this webcam like only once or twice. One was from my Super Smash Brothers Brawl playthrough of the Subspace Emissary story mode. I used the webcam mic there. Um it wasn't bad, but it's it but it was only like what marginally better than a web that been a, marginally better than the laptop microphone. So webcam mics aren't all that great either. Uh, wired headset mic, the one I use, uh, I still occasionally use that. Sometimes I just don't feel like using my professional one. Sometimes I just prefer to just, cause like because with this one like it's it's attached to a stand, so I can't really take the laptop with uh, this thing with me wherever I go. Because I can't take this desk that's attached, that the mic stand is attached to with me wherever I go. So sometimes I just, like, you know what, I'm just going to use my wired headset and go to a different room. So that's really only when I use the wired headset instead of my professional microphone. Um, but whenever I stream or record, I do use the professional microphone most of the time. Yeah, exactly. The webcam mic wasn't very good. Better than a laptop mic, but just not very good. Which is why I stopped using it. Which mic do I use as a backup for the beeper? Oh, that's the US, this USB mic. Remember this, guys? This USB mic? Which is also not very good. TBH. Uh, but yeah, I used that one too. And I hated using this one. I fucking hated using it. It did not. It does not filter out background noise very well. Uh, it's not the worst microphone I had. I I've ever had, but it just wasn't very good. I did not want to use it again. <sighs> but anyway, it's a Dynex USB microphone. In case you guys are wondering, D Y N E X Dynex USB microphone. It just wasn't very good. Most of my mics were just not very good. The only ones that were good were like the wireless headset one and the one I have right now, the XLR one. The wireless headset one was good, but the problem with it was that it just beeped a lot and it fucked up my voice. Like it was just so glitchy that I just ended up having to switch to my wired headset mic, which I, again, which I, which, you know, this one, you guys remember this one? And I had to I had to switch over to that to the point where I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna stop using that that headset mic. I just stopped using the wireless one, and then I just stuck with the wired one. And then I was like, Ugh, I hate using this one so much. But at least I don't have to worry about USB ports with that one. And then I was like, you know what? I need a new mic. That was the reason why I even got this mic because I was like, I'm tired of this wireless wired headset shit. And wireless headset shit. I'm tired of headsets in general. I was thinking about getting a headset. Another headset. But I'm like, no, I'm tired of headsets in general. Plus, I hate having to be put those, having to put those things over my ears all the time. In the case of the wire, wired one, I, I was always tethered to the computer. So sometimes I would forget that I was still tethered to the computer. And I would just walk away and it's like, whoop. Oh, shit. The headset came off. Or it came off my head. Or it just unplugged itself. <laughs> it's like... I was like, I'm tired of this. I want a different mic. <laughs> but, yeah. Casually drops the headset. It wasn't wireless anyway. It made your voice sound so compressed. It did, didn't it? And that's how a lot of USB mics sound. Actually, pretty much everyone. Even the high-end ones. That they're all very good. They can be very... No, I'm sorry. Not, not all of them are very good. But the high-end ones can be very good, but at the end of the day, they all just have a bit of compression to them compared to the XLR mics, which as you can see and hear, they just sound so much better. So get an XLR mic if you can. And of course, if you're going to get an XLR mic or a high-end USB mic, whatever, 
make sure you get a pop filter. Make sure you get a pop filter. Um, and the reason for this is that pop filters prevent your mic when you're speaking. Pop filters prevent your mic from like having all those puffs of air coming right at it. So here, like here, like here, I can just I can demonstrate this for you. Watch. Listen to how this sounds. Pear pepper, pulled peppers. Didn't sound very good, right? Okay, now let me. Okay, now here, now listen to how it sounds. Peter Piper pickled peppers. See. So, pop pop filters. They they just eliminate those puffs of air, so that way people are the mic is just like. And it's just like, ugh, just no. <sighs> That's why pop filters are important. And plus, you don't want all that spit to be on your microphone because then that, that will casually mess up your microphone. Like, I mean, gradually, not casually, I'm sorry. It will gradually mess up your microphone, and you don't want that. So pop filters are important for not getting spit on your microphone either. So let me just adjust this. Yeah. Probably should have muted it first before adjusting it. My bad. <laughs> Oh, well, fuck it. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, there. It's all adjusted now. Um, okay, but yeah, pop filters are important. You don't want people to constantly hear puffs of air. Excuse me. So, make sure. And you don't want to mess up your mic, so get a pop filter. They're very inexpensive. They cost like $7, $8. So there's no excuse as to why you can't get one. Um, so that's one thing. Oh, and... If you don't want to use a pop filter, there's another thing you can use. You can use a wind muff. And here, let me get mine. I have one over here. So you can also use what I call a wind. It well, I don't really call it that. Everyone calls it that, but <laughs> this is a wind muff. And what you do is you put it over your uh, microphone like this. I don't. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't really want to. But you put it over, actually let me do it, why not? Okay, so, yeah, so you put it over your microphone and it, and it like, it like, it like helps like if you're outside and there's and there's like wind or background noise or whatever, this is actually quite good at filtering that sound out. All around though, it doesn't do it in one direction like just like the pop filter does. So if you want if you want like 360 sound protection, wind muffs are good. Like but that like I find them useful like if you're outside or in like an all all around environment where there's gonna be like sounds and shit hitting from all sides. But if it's just, but if you're like talking to a microphone and like, like if you're just talking to a microphone, the pop filter is fine. It's just one direction you have to worry about. But if you're outside, then wind muffs are definitely essential. Uh, let me take off the wind muff though. Ooh, Blue Wolf's getting the band hammer. He almost said the C word. It looks like a k anyway. <laughs> so if you don't want a pop filter, you can also get a wind muff. But they both have they're both they both have uses, different uses. Wind muffs are good if you want to like if you want all around sound protection. Uh, pop filters are good if you just want like just sound protection in one direction. How <laughs> that rhymed and one direction. I forgot they existed. Anyway. I'm pretty sure everyone did, TBH. But, let's see. 
So you could get a pop filter or a wind muff. And I think there's a third one, third type of uh, device you can get, but I forgot what it's called, honestly. I, I never really use my wind muff because I don't really record outside. Like they're, they're useful if you want to do like outside vlogging and shit, but I, I don't need to do that. <sighs> Let me put my wind muff up. No, go in there. Oh, that's where my PSP went. <laughs> I forgot I put it in there. Wow. Okay. Okay. So going back to XLR microphones. Actually, no, before I do that. Okay. So. So I'm going to do like do. So at one point in this presentation, I'm going to use each of these different microphones, like my laptop mic, my webcam mic, my wired mic my wireless mic, my USB mic, and my XLR mic, and you guys will definitely hear and see the difference between all of these. So that'll be fun. But before we do that, let me go ahead and talk about XLR microphones in more detail. So as I said, Um, oh wait, hold on. I'm reading the chat. Didn't the headset fall during the JD stream? Yeah, that's what I hate about the wireless headset. That's why I hate, that's another reason why I stopped using it. Because like, I would try to use it while I was dancing, but it got, it, it would, it would often fall off my head. And plus, the, the earpieces would often get sweaty and shit, and I'm like, ew. So I was like, I don't want to wear that. And <laughs> And plus, like, the earpieces themselves sometimes fall off. So I'm like, okay, I'm tired of this. I don't want to use this anymore. So I, I, that's, that's, that's the reason why I just stopped. I, why I just actually stopped, like, using the headset while I was dancing. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this song. Then I would take off, turn off, mute the headset, and then put it down, and then dance, and then put it back on, and then shit. But even then, after I did, even with that, I, my, it would still get sweaty. So I'm just like, ew. Fortunately, my XLR microphone makes that pretty much pointless, uh, unnecessary. So like, uh, so like, all I just have to do is use that if I wanna, if I wanna like, <laughs> if I wanna talk and dance in real time. One Direction, Jesus. Last time I heard of them, I was getting all perfect on what makes you beautiful extreme. Damn. The webcam mic was very fuzzled. That mic sounded like you were far away. Yeah, and that's another reason why I don't like using webcam mics anyway. Because, like, unless you're sitting, like, right up to the webcam or right up to the TV, you, you, you would sound like you were far away. And I was like, I hated using it because I'm like, oh, like, they can't hear me very well because it's all the way over there and I don't want to be like right up to the TV because I want the webcam to look at me from a distance. So that's another reason why I just stopped using my webcam mic. Instead of showing my face to the viewers, I use my VTube model on stream, Chi Man. VTube? Like, Vlog too. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry if I sound ignorant. I haven't paid attention to that shit in a long time. Yeah, I have all my, I have all my headsets, all the ones. You sound far away with the backup mic. Oh. Oh, I what I said about the webcam mic still applies anyway. But um. Yeah, a lot of my mics were just shit. I never used a laptop mic though, and thank. God. Okay, so let me go back to XLR microphones. So, they're good, very good. Professionals use them, but they tend to be a bit more expensive than USB mics. And there are multiple reasons for this. The first reason is that they can't be directly plugged into the computer like a USB mic. That's just not how they work. They don't work like that. What 
And here, let me, if you, here, hold on. Okay, so you can see here, like down here, this is this cable going to this, that's plugged into this mic and coming all the way down here. That's an XLR cable. It's not a USB cable, so you can't just plug it in and do that. There are some cables that are designed to like take XLR input and then convert it to USB, but those tend not to have very, very good, uh, they, they can have good quality, but they're not as good as just a standard XLR cable. Um, so, so yeah, like that's, 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 that's one downside to having an XLR microphone. Like you have, you have an XLR cable and you have to plug that into not the computer, but to an interface, a separate device called an interface. And um, let me see if I can show you mine. I hope I can show you. Uh, shit, it's gonna be kind of hard. Like, ah, uh, damn. Son of a bitch. Right, hold on. Just move this fucking desk. There you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so this is. Oh, shit. This down here. Okay, so this USB interface, this is where you plug the end of this XLR cable here right here and then you plug the other end in here into the, what this this is called a USB interface Let me just make sure yeah and then there are knobs here where you can like adjust the volume stuff uh, and then the, at a more fine finer detail than you can with the traditional USB mic like the the audio manipulation with an XLR mic is much more precise and much more and 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 like much more precise like it just allows you to do more um but yeah you plug it into the xlr cable from the mic into this usb interface and then once you plug that in then you plug in a cable from the usb interface into your, into your computer so it's a very roundabout process and that's one thing that some people might find annoying about xlr mics because you have to buy the mic then you have to buy an XLR cable if it doesn't come with the mic. And then you have to buy an interface. And that's like three things you have to buy. Now, the XLR cable isn't expensive. It's only, like, I bought mine for like only $10. $7, 8 9 $10, somewhere there. But the interface can be quite expensive, depending on the one, depending on which one you want to get. <coughs> Sorry. Um, like... Um, the one I bought was like, what, $45, $55, somewhere there. I linked it in the description, by the way. Um, which isn't very much, but the thing is that this one is a pretty simple interface. It has like, it has like really only one, one, um, mic line input thing. So you pl you can only, pl you can plug in only like one device into it, one XLR device into it. So if that's really only, if really only one is what you need, then that's fine. Because I have only one, my microphone. I don't need any other XLR device. So then, so if you want, if you have just one, then getting this interface is a pretty budget friendly option. It's like only $45, $55, pretty cheap. But there are, but the problem is that there are some people who don't need just a mic, like one device, they need two. Like not just a mic, but also, the input coming from a musical instrument like a guitar or a keyboard that they also want to going into the interface so with that you'd have to find an inf interface that has like two inputs instead of just one input and that's when the, the cost can start skyrocketing a two input interface is kind of pricey like like a hundred something dollars like uh, i think maybe a hundred ten some somewhere in that range but it's it's not a cheap option. So if you have multi, if you have like two, or even more than that, like say you have three, well then that's that's the problem. An interface can be a good interface can be quite costly if you have more than one device. So yeah, it's it that's another that's an annoying thing about XLR devices. You need to find the right interface. 
and then and then you need to make sure like you, you just need to find the right interface if you have one device not a big deal just get the one I have two or three yeah you're gonna have to fork over some cash and so that's a downside to in uh, to XLR mics and of course the interface itself is annoying like like not not no it's not a bad device I'm not talking about the interface itself but the fact that you have to pay for that along with something else just to use an XLR mic that's you know yeah exactly it's it's too much right and that's only and this is like like okay so let's say okay so I had like I bought my microphone my Audio Technica AT2020 microphone, that's what it's called. My XLR microphone for $100. And I bought the cable for, I can't really remember, I think it was like eight or nine dollars. Let's just say nine dollars. Uh, you know, fuck it, round it. Let's, let's go to 10, ten dollars. So a hundred dollar mic with a ten dollar cable. And I think this was like 55 when I bought it. So like $55. So yeah, so 100 plus 10 plus 100 plus 55. And that's not even including the tax and the shipping. Uh, so let's see, 100, 110, 155, $165, not including tax or shipping. For an XLR mic, and that's not and the, and again, you also have to get a pop filter and a mic stand, like which I'm using right now, and I link that to the description as well. And the mic stand I brought came comes with a pop filter as well. I have two. I accidentally ordered uh, the mic stand I ordered already had one, and I didn't realize it at the time, and I was like, "Oops, I just have two pop filters now because I ordered one separately." So my bad. But oh well, that's okay. I use both. I like. I'm like. Okay. I have two. That's cool. I'll just swap between them as needed. But the point is that you also have to get a mic stand and a pop filter. So I can't remember what my mic stand. How much did my mic stand cost? I don't know. I'd have to look. Let me look this shit up. I should have kept these tabs open. But Jesus, like it is. It's just ridiculous. Uh, let's see. My microphone stands go here. You might as well look at my XLR interface too. I'm curious about that. And Okay, so uh the my microphone stand costs like if you don't include shipping Actually, my microphone stand was quite cheap. Maybe it was, I think it was, it's like $17 right now, $16.89 to be exact. But when I bought it, it was like, I think $20? I don't remember. And this one, my interface is now $45, but I think when I bought it, it was like $55. And I can't remember how much the XLR cable costs. It's one from Amazon. It's a special one from Amazon. Okay, so it costs like seven sixty one. Okay, so yeah, like, let's say the mic stand costs like twenty dollars, and the pop filter is like eight dollars. So with the one sixty five plus the twenty dollars, it's like one sixty five plus the twenty dollars. Yeah, uh, one eighty five plus this pop filter is. Let's see. I can't math today. <laughs> I'm not only faster at math. I don't know. It's because I didn't get... I don't think I got a lot of sleep last night. Or maybe I did. Oh, well, whatever. Um, so, 165 plus 20 is 185 plus 8 is 193. So, that's like... And again, that's not including shipping and handling. So, that's like at least $200 that you have to spend just to get an XLR mic. Compared to a USB mic, a high-end USB mic, not just any, a high-end one, like the Blue Yeti, where you just buy the mic and the pop filter and maybe a cam stand, I'm um, sorry, microphone stand, and you don't have to worry about all that, a lot of stuff, really. You don't have to worry about the interface or the XLR cable. 
So, yeah. <sighs> but, so yeah, at USB mics are definitely cheaper. But here's the thing, though. XLR mics tend to be of higher quality. So if you really want that quality, you're going to have to invest a bit. I don't regret getting this stuff. I'm not really complaining. It's just that I'm telling you that if you want an XLR mic, this is what you're going to have to spend on it. Although prices change over time, so who knows? Maybe you'll get a better deal now than I did. But I'm not really here to complain, just to tell you guys, if you want an XLR mic, just know what you're getting yourself into. But if you're fine with the USB mic, a very high-end one, like the Blue Yeti, that's fine too. Doesn't matter. It's really about how much you're willing to invest. If you don't want to invest in like every, like just for the highest quality and just like a lot of quality is good, but not the highest quality. If you just want to just go for a typical, well, not typical, high-end USB mic, then that's fine. That's perfectly fine. You can get good quality that way. But if you really want the best of the best, an XLR mic is what you need. Boy, you passed calculus too, but you can't do simple math. I know, I'm sorry, like, my mind is just not working today. I don't know why. I feel like, I feel like my mind is declining. Because I'm just forgetting shit that I should already know. So in conclusion, nothing is perfect. Yeah, basically. Here, let me readjust my mic. It's weird having it like this. Okay, you you hated calculus too. I actually liked clack. I actually liked calculus too. It was a, it was more interesting than calculus one. Calculus one was boring, but calculus two was interesting. I liked it. it was, it's very theory based. It's really like you not really you're just really learning a bunch of integration techniques and some derivative techniques, and that's it. It's really just an, it's really just like an expansion pack of the first, if that makes sense. I'm not sure why I use that as a metaphor, but whatever. You just really, it's really just more of Calculus 1. Calculus 3 I haven't even tried though. Not because I can't, because I'm just tired of math. <laughs> okay, um, oh you meant Calculus 1? Eh, Calculus 1 I kind of didn't like. I felt like it could have been taught better for me, but I got a B in it, so whatever. I could have gotten an A if I had tried harder, but I just don't care about perfection. Sometimes. <laughs> Calculus 2, I got a C in. I would have gotten a B in, excuse me, I would have gotten a B in that one too, but again, I was in a kind of, I, towards the end of the semester, I was kind of in a, I don't care, I'm going to pass anyway mood. <laughs> but anyway, your bank account won't be happy about this, right? So, yeah. So yeah, you need an XLR cable and an interface for an XLR mic. And I knew I knew that this was going to be quite a pricey option, but I really didn't want to settle for just another USB mic, even if it was a high-end one. I was just tired of that. So I'm like, you know what? I need if I'm gonna do this right, I need to get the best of the best equipment. So I got an XLR mic. And Mine is probably not even the best one, but it is a very good one. Very good. Clearly high-end. But, and one that a lot of people use. Yeah, this one, this is, the one I have is quite good. A lot of people use it. It's one of the best. Not sure if it's the best, but it's one of the best. So, if you really want that quality, you know, as I said, sometimes you have to spend money to make money. And I'm glad I did, because... You know, it's it was a good trade-off. I, I have really good quality for my mic now. But anyway, my microphone is again the Audio Technica AT20. Uh, the audio interface is Beringer, whatever it's called. I think it's I think it's from Germany. I can't remember the brand or whatever. I don't know. Uh, my XLR cable, Amazon Basics, just one that Amazon makes. It's very good, but. It's like it's it's like any other XLR cable. Oh, VTuber means virtual YouTuber. Oh, huh. Shows how much I know. Whatever. What even is a virtual YouTuber? But yeah. Now, if you don't really care that much about 
if you, I mean, if you still care about quality, but you don't want to spend that much, then just get a high-end USB microphone, like a Blue Yeti. That's fine. There are people that use those, even in podcasts. And I think, I think they also, I think they're also used, I think they sometimes use the professional work too. But the XLR mics just are just better, though. No, re- virtually no compression. Look it up. Fine, I'll look it up. God. Maybe you think it's better if I just find out for myself. That's fine. I was just kidding anyway. Um, but yeah, just so you know, if you want an XLR microphone, you can't just plug it in. You have to invest in some extra stuff. But if you're on a budget-friendly option, if you want something more budget-friendly, just find the high-end. Uh, just find the high-end USB microphone, like the Blue Yeti. Okay, so now let's go to green screens. Now, there are two types of green screens. And again, if you don't care about having a green screen, that's fine. There are plenty of streamers that don't use one. So there are some that simply just have the camera pointed at them in their room or whatever they use. That's fine. Corey Kenshin doesn't use a green screen. I don't think he does. As well as Docco. I don't think Docco uses one either. But there are plenty that do use a green screen though. But, it, so it just depends on what you want. Uh, so, let me talk about what the benefits of a green screen are. The, so, a green screen, it, what's cool about it is that instead of having like a separate window uh, for your camera, or like having your, or like having like your face cam, you know, window, oh, like, like overlapping the game, and you can actually use a green screen then you you just blend in with the game if you do it correctly you can blend in with the game and you won't really seem all that intrusive so that's the that's the advantage of having a green screen you know it it just it just makes you feel like you're actually part of the game in a sense aesthetic sense um that being said if you do want a green screen they t- depending on which one you get they what kind you get they tend not to be so budget friendly um, and the and depending on which one you get, they can also be quite a bit of a fuss to maintain. So there are two types of green screens. There are collapsible green screens, which is the one I have, and the cloth green screen, which I also have, but I never I never used it in the end. I think I used it like once, and then that was it, like for a test recording. Then I never used it again. Um. So collapsible green screens, I'm going to tell you up front, they're much more expensive than cloth ones. Because, and it makes sense because like, you know, that like you, like they, they come from like a little black, whatever it's called. You pull them up from that thing and then you use rods or whatever, unless they already come with built-in rods. Some of them you have to assemble, the, with some of them you have to assemble the rods yourself, like the support rods. But with others, like, there are rods built in and you just really pull it up and that's it. So, these tend to be quite expensive. Like, we're talking like $100 at the very least. At the very least, $100 for good quality ones. Um, and of course, I'm using one right now, but... They're a lot easier to maintain than cloth green screens. So much easier to maintain. So much easier. Because with cloth green screens, yeah, they're far less expensive. Like you can get one like $20, $30 online very easily. But you have to hang them up and make sure that they're all flat and spread out. And you have to iron them and make sure that they don't get wrinkled. And I'm just like, I'm tired of that. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm just gonna get a collapsible one, and I found one that was like a hundred dollars, so that that's that's an okay price for me. Uh, you can get away with a cloth screen though; it's fine. There are people, plenty of people that use a cloth screen, but I just don't care to do that. I like this; I don't have to worry about wrinkles as long as I fold it away properly. Like if I'm not careful about how I like retract it, then it'll get all bent and shit. But but I'm careful with that normally, so. I don't have to worry about wrinkles, and and like 
and it's just easier to maintain like all you just do is fold it like just retract it and then you put it up and mine came with a case that I can just put in and then like take with me whatever wherever including the rods so I'm like okay that is lit um, I don't remember which one it was though. I that's why I didn't leak in the description, and I hate that. But you could probably find one another green screen, a collapsible green screen that's just as good. And of course, you want to consider the size. Like if you're just streaming, if you're just one person streaming, then a green screen that's fairly skinny is not an issue. There's plenty of room for you to move around. Um, but if you're streaming with like more than one person, you might want to get a wider green screen just to just something that you should keep in mind um but yeah like but yeah that's something that's 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 just something i should tell you if you want a green screen i honestly recommend getting a collapsible one it's just so much easier to use you don't have to worry about f f like recording uh, like wrinkles and shit like it's it's just it's just so much easier. Um, let me go back to the chat. Oh shit. Speaking of podcasts, you'd be very good with one. Really? Thank you. Um. Yeah, because I do rant streams, so why not podcasts? Maybe I should start doing stuff like that. Although I don't really know what I talk about. Are you talking about how to stream a game? Yeah, basically. Oh, by the way, Corey has reached 10 million subscribers, so that means he's retired from YouTube. I'm surprised he hasn't already. Because he was active at one, fairly active at one point. I think if you're a high-end streamer, you should definitely get one. I wish I could stream Just Dance. You guys have any advice for Calculus 1 since you said it was boring? Basically, just find whatever teacher can explain the concept to you. If the teacher you if the teacher you have can't explain it for shit, and there are some teachers like that, unfortunately, find one who can. Sometimes the textbooks don't teach you shit. Sometimes the teachers don't teach you shit, and you just have to figure it out on your own. That's what I did with physics. I'm like, I, physics 1, I'm like, I don't understand what the fuck she's talking about. So I went to so I went and looked up some YouTube videos as well as uh as well as like went to tutoring sessions and I'm like, oh, okay, now I understand this. I gotta be in that class. Um but anyway. Yeah, ew, irony. Exactly. Like it's just a fuss. Like just get a collapsible one. But just be careful not to get one that's too expensive. Some of them are just really expensive, like the Elgato ones. Those can go like up to $140 or $150. I think I saw one that was like 200 ones. So don't just don't spend more than you need. The, what I have here is fine. It was like only $100. Okay, yeah, and that, that's true. All that stuff and I put in the description does look expensive, but Okay, but here's the thing. I said this earlier, but let me say it again. I didn't buy all of this in one at like at one point in time. This is something that I these are things that I've acquired over the years. Oops. I acquired these over the years. So, if you're going to invest in if you want all the equipment that I have, great, but obviously you don't want to buy everything at once right now. Like just take it one at a time. You want to start with the capture card at first, uh, you know, obviously you want to start with that first. But after that, like, just take it one step at a time. You don't have to buy everything now. Because so, over time, it'll all pay. It'll all pay off. Just, just be, and of course, be careful not to spend more than you need. Do your research and make sure that the products you get are the ones that you are actually going to need and the ones that are very good. Because you don't want to get a capture card that doesn't actually do what it promises to do. Like, no joke. Once I was getting, the, I thought about getting this eighty-dollar capture card. That was an HDMI one. And then I looked it up. Like, okay, so on the description it said it was it it did 1080p at 60 FPS. But 
I went and watched the review of it, and that person said, no, it doesn't record in 60 FPS and 1080p. It records in 60 F uh, 30 FPS and 1080p. It doesn't. Rec it does 720p and 60 FPS and 1080p and 30 FPS, but not 1080p and 60 FPS. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm not getting that one. I mean, again, I don't care about 60 FPS, really, but I, I want a capture card that actually promises what it's going to do. So I was like, eh, I don't want that one. Let me find a different one. And I found a very good one. Fuck Calc 1, fuck Physics, fuck those classes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you guys. Often, ma often math isn't taught very well at all. <sighs> right now, you're just learning whatever the fuck your college is teaching you. Oh crap! What the hell? Oh shit! Oh shit! Um, shit! Oh fuck! God damn it! Oh man! God damn it. No, no, no. I wanted to record. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is not good. My, I thought I ran out of space. How the hell did I run out of space while I was recording? I made sure I had space left. How did I run out of space? It's two, it's only two hours. What the fuck happened? Hold up. That's just so fucking annoying, like seriously. Oh my god. I'm pretty sure I had enough space. What the fuck? How did I run out of space? Oh my god. How the hell did I run out of space? What happened? It's only 1.86 gigabytes. I had more than that. Oh my fucking god, I just... Okay, you know what? It's okay. I lost like only, what, 15 minutes of that? 12 minutes, technically. Hold on. Let me delete some more stuff. It's because of all this sh these stupid recordings of Among Us that I have. I need to get rid of these. But I'm pretty sure I deleted some already. I don't know what the hell happened. Son of a bitch! Okay, it's probably this one. Let me delete this one. I don't... Let me just make sure there's nothing important in it first. Oh! I know this one. It's it's one of my Among Us streams. I don't want to delete that one. Let me delete another one. Let me try this one. I don't think it has anything important in it. Yeah, let me just delete that. I just fucking hate that. I'm pretty sure I had enough space. Well, that's okay. Let me just start recording again. Okay. Uh, so for this recording, I'm just going to say it really fast anyway. Green screen. Is, green screen is great because it makes you feel like you're actually in the game. Uh, there are two types, collapsible green screen, cloth green screen. Uh, collapsible ones are more expensive, like in the hundreds, compared to cloth ones, which are like only $20 or $30, but they're easier to maintain. Collapsible ones are easier to maintain because 
All you have to do is really just retract them and then put them away and you're done. You don't have to worry about folding them or making sure that they're, wrink they're wrinkle free, but you have to iron them constantly and then hang them up. Like that's just a fuss with cloth green screens. So just try to invest in a collapsible green screen, but we're done talking about that. Okay. Okay, so streaming software. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me read the chat. All right, I'll be waiting for your album to drop on iTunes. <laughs> I need to make an album too. Gotta get that special collab with Chi for one song. I damn! Oh my god. <laughs> I also, I honestly, I know that I'm not, I know that I'm not exactly talented at it like Taman is, but I really, Taman's quite talented at this, but I really do, I thought about being a voice actor, honestly. I feel like I could be one, but. I just mean I'm not I'm not as talented at, at it as Tamman is. Tamman's Tamman honestly I like he was made for that. I'm just not. <laughs> but I can always learn. I just need to but I just need to, you know, learn a few get some tips from some experts and all that stuff. Maybe even take a few classes. But anyway. The life of a streamer. <laughs> Drake Bell just got arrested. Damn. Did that really happen? What? Drake Bell? The guy we all know and love? You would have made a lot of money being a voice actor. Yeah, like, yeah, I like, I, I, I just like the idea of being a voice actor. Like, you get to, you get to be a part of people's childhood and memories. And, and when you go to the conventions, people are always asking, Oh, can you do this in this voice or shit? <laughs> I feel like I could be one. I just need training. That's really all I need. Training. Not so much with acting itself. Although I'll need training. I still need training with that too. But more about the ability to create distinct voices. That's something that Tamman can do. I'm not as good as doing it as he is. But I can always learn. Some people are just... Again, some people like Tim are just naturally good at it. Me, not so much. But anyway, I can always learn. Um, but anyway, uh, regarding streaming software, really, the one I use is OBS Studio. I don't really use, I don't think I've ever used any other one because OBS Studio is like, it's just the easiest for me to use. I think I tried using another one once, but then I just, I was like, nope, I'll just go back to OBS Studio. But if you find other ones that work for you, or other ones that are even better than OBS Studio, then go ahead and use them. But really, any that will let you stream just fine as work. I just, I just use OBS Studio. And yeah, that's another thing. You can also stream games from a console. Let me point that out here. I forgot to men. I forgot about that. You can also stream games from certain consoles. I forgot that that this was a feature. So that's technically possible. I never use these features from these consoles, but you can. You can actually stream from directly from certain consoles. All you just have to do is like just set up just, you know, put in some info and then and then do a few other things and that's it. Is OBS Studio the best? I honestly don't know though. I don't know. I haven't really used very many. But OBS Studio is definitely really easy to use. It's probably the most one of the most intuitive. Like, it's it's just so easy to use and figure out. I like I've never really had much I don't really use tutorials that much about it. The only time I've ever really used tutorials are for like when I need to like learn set up a green screen or set up a, a chat overlay. I forgot about the chat overlay, honestly. I haven't used that in years. So 
with the chat overlay, honestly, I forgot how to do that. <laughs> so that's something you'll have to look up on your own. Although, I honestly stopped using it because, like, I just, I don't know. I just felt, I just, at first it was nice, but then I'm like, eh, I'm going to take it out. I, I just, I just, it kind of feel, it, it felt a bit intrusive over time. Imagine if we were in the next Star Wars or something. <laughs> Actually intend to stream on Twitch. So, cool. Yeah, another thing I forgot to mention. Uh, let me po post that. You can stream. If you want to stream. You should stream on YouTube or Twitch. As both are very good for gaming streams. So, if you want to stream games... Stream on YouTube or Twitch. They're both very good websites for uh, streaming. Twitch is more focused on gaming than YouTube is, but YouTube still has... YouTube is still very good for gaming. So, I, I streamed on Twitch like once, I believe. It was for FNAF Ultimate Custom Night. And I was like, I was trying to, like... I was trying to uh, do 50-20 mode and like... Try to see if I could get it, uh, beat it faster than someone else. Uh, one of my friends was could, one of my friends could, but I honestly didn't like that stream. Not Twitch itself, but I just didn't like that stream. So that, that was the only time I would use Twitch. Um, I do have friends, I do have one friend that uses it. Uh, his name is Yan Anthony, Yan 93. Uh, I've known him for years. Yeah, he uses Twitch. Um, I, f I feel like maybe I should use Twitch more often, but I like YouTube because I feel like YouTube is just a bit more accessible. Like really anyone can watch a gaming stream, but with Twitch, that's, I think that's something that's dedicated gamers. So it's not as big as YouTube, but it's more focused on gaming, if that makes sense. Remembering T Man's one Twitch stream. <laughs> I kind of miss the chat overlay for finding specific parts in the past stream. LOL. Yeah, I don't know if I should bring it back. I, I, I like it felt like it felt like more of an actual stream, but I don't know. I just felt like eh, I'm gonna get rid of it. Like there are times where I had it over the game, and times where I just had it to the side. And either way, either style is fine. If you want to use a chat overlay, you can have it over directly over your game or to like one to one um what to one like over to one area of the screen where it's not blocking the game. I've done both. Some people like one, some people like the other. It depends on you. Again, there's no single right way of doing this stuff. Chance of getting a copyright claim on Twitch is somewhat forgiving. That makes sense. YouTube is a lot more aggressive with copyright than Twitch is. I might bring back the chat overlay. I think OBS Studio like ha has a, a new feature where you actually that makes the that makes the process a bit simpler. So I'd have to look into that because um, I did make a video where I teach people how to do the chat overlay, but I think that methods outdated so I'd have to uh, find a different one now imagine if BOB saw your streams that would be nice I forgot BOB existed though Twitch is probably better opportunity for beginners makes sense yeah that does make sense like see I didn't have to I see I didn't have to do that because on YouTube I was already kind of well known in certain communities, like in the SpongeBob community, because my SpongeBob streams uh, playthroughs were quite popular, and as well as other things like the Sonic series and stuff like that. So I didn't really need Twitch to get a head start. I already had a head start from all those years of experience in playing games. But if you if you do, but Twitch might be a good start for other people. Oh hey, what's up? The dude. 
Okay, but yeah, you can stream either on Twitch or YouTube. If you if you're just starting out as a streamer, it might be better to go with Twitch first, and then and then you know switch over to YouTube. Uh, if you if for not all the time, but just sometimes if you want, it might be better to start off with Twitch first. Um. Yeah, that's all I can say. And I'll show you guys how OBS Studio works in a bit. But right now, let me get through this presentation. Okay, so. So yeah, just find the streaming, streaming platform that works for you. Any streaming platform that works for you. I use OBS Studio. I like it. I don't know if it's the best, but it's definitely one of the best. It's just so easy to use. And, and I, and you know, it's just, and I can do a lot of things with it really. And I'll show you guys in a moment. I'll even show you guys how to like, I'll show you guys how to first of all, set up your equipment, like your sources that you can feed into OBS studio, as well as how to make your own backgrounds. Um, and remember the backgrounds I had, I made those by myself. Um, I made those by myself because I, I could have used a preset background from like online. I could have just downloaded one and used it, but I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make one myself. Like I wanted to make it personal. I wanted one for myself. So I made one. The very first one I made wasn't good, but that's because I for, I didn't give myself enough time to work on it. But then I completely made it, I made it so much better the second, like in the second stream of Sonic 06. Like it was a... The very first stream I had one, but it was not very good. It was meant to be a placeholder anyway, but the second one was a lot better. So I just did that. And then, uh, and then, and then like for one, for one part of that background, I did have a placeholder for a camera that I was planning on getting soon. So that's why I had that GameCube icon there. If you guys remember that. Um, but yeah, I'll show you how to make your own backgrounds. Uh, and other stuff in OBS Studio. But before we do that, let me talk about... Wait, hold on, hold on. Um, I think it was orange actually, not yellow. Maybe it was a combination of the two. I really wish I'd given myself more time to work on it, but that's what I get for being stupid. And procrastinating like I did today I don't learn <laughs> but anyway hold on what does the chat say like it's so much easier to get five viewers on twitch with game browsing and stuff well if you're on YouTube with zero subs no one will find you yeah that's the annoying thing about YouTube sometimes it's just hard to get attention but on twitch it's actually easier which makes sense because twitch is more centered on gaming I might have to switch over to Twitch at some point. I'm probably get more people that way. I think the highest amount of, of viewers I've ever had is like what, seventeen. Like that's really it. Which I mean, I'm happy with that, but like I have like over ten subs, so I feel like I should have a bit more than that by now. But anyway, uh, you can rain on other people's streams after you're done streaming on Twitch. <laughs> Wow. OBS is the definitive streaming recording software at this point. Yeah, it really is. I, I've used it for so many years. I don't know. I can't I can't switch over to anything else. I tried to use like what was it? OBS Streamlabs or whatever it's called. I didn't like it. I'm like, no, I'm going back to the original. <laughs> but anyway. Um Maybe I should try doing using Twitch more often. I don't know though, because I'm just so used to doing it on YouTube. But it's nice to see you, not me gaming. I wasn't expecting you to come here. It's nice to see you. I wonder if you still play Among Us. Um, I'm still playing it, although not very much, because it's honestly it's just harder and harder to find games, even with the new 15-player lobby shit. And you still have dumbasses in public lobbies. So many dumbasses. So many. It, it hurts. It painfully hurts. Well, that makes no sense because if something hurts, and of course it's painful. I'm stupid. But <laughs> but it, it's, it's just so painful. You know, it's just... Ugh. But anyway. 
Um, let me go back to the presentation. So, general tips for streaming and recording games. Okay. You'd be amazed at how many times people fuck these things up. But it, I should just say it. If you're going to play a game... If you're going to play a game, if you want, if you're going to stream or record a game, play the fucking thing first. Unless you're playing it blind, play the damn game first. You don't, and the reason for this is that it's just so frustrating watching somebody play a game, and they keep fucking things up, or they just, they just, they just keep not knowing what to do, and it's just. And I'm just like, oh my god, what are you doing? Like, have you played this game before? Like, if, if you're playing it blind, that's fine. No one's expecting you to be perfect then. But if, you, if you're going to say something like walkthrough or playthrough, then it's kind of expected that you know what you're doing. But some people just go into the game, like, for the first time, and, and then they fuck up, and I'm like, this is not a walkthrough. This is a hot mess. A very hot mess. If you're playing the blind, again, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. I did that a few times myself. But make sure you make sure you you tell people up front that you're playing it blind. Don't 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 just say, "Oh, this is going to be a playthrough, a walkthrough, a let's play." And then you play the game, you bomb and everyone's like, "What are you doing?" It's like, "Oh, I've never played this game before." Like that would have been good to know. Like to, just make that clear. That way people will know what they're getting into. Like, please. Just please. Please play the damn game first. And if you're playing it blind, as I have in the past a few times, um, make that clear. Like, even if you're in your tile, it says blind. Like, just make, just make it clear. Like, please, make it clear. That way people are like, oh, okay, it's your first time. All right, cool. So that way they'll be more lenient towards you and they'll even give you tips. But if you just go in and play the game, like, just... Please at least prepare for it. Even if you haven't, like, just prepare for it. Like, play the game first, or at the very least, try to look up strategies, or or read up on the game, or whatever. Don't just go into it completely blind if you're not going to tell people that you're playing it blind. It's it's annoying. I've seen that. Like, this one game, this one playthrough of, what was it, Shadow of the Tomb Raider? Like... This person, it was, he said it was a walkthrough, but this person, he kept fucking up at every single opportunity. And I'm just like, dude, have you not played this game before? And not to mention that he just had took a long time to solve puzzles that were so simple to solve. Like, I could have solved them in half the time he did. And I'm just like, you don't know what you're doing, do you? Play the game first, please. So that's, that's like the most important thing you can do. Just play the game first unless you're playing it blind. And if you're playing it blind, make that clear. Okay, and another thing that's also important is that you should make it clear as to what parts of the game you're going to cover and what parts you aren't. So like say, oh, I'm the, so like say there are multiple endings in the game. Which one are you going to cover? Are you going to cover all of the endings or just some of them? Because some people will just cover only some of them. Some people will cover all of them. Like in my Undertale stream, you know, I covered all three endings. I didn't do the, 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 I, I didn't do the soulless ones. I just did the first, the, the original ones. I didn't do the soulless ones, uh, the soulless endings, because that, that would have just required doing everything twice. I didn't feel like doing that. Um, but I did show what happened during those endings. I was playing the game with Sparky at the time. So make it clear as to what things you're going to do and what things you aren't going to do. That way people know what they're going to expect when they start watching your playthrough. Because sometimes people may want to watch a playthrough because they want to see, want to see someone do some, a certain part of the game, but then they'll get disappointed when it's like, oh, you weren't going to do that? So just make it clear. Like, like, like no joke. I'd also, I've done, the, I, I've done this in, my, in the past with several of my playthroughs. You know my SpongeBob playthroughs. I in the in the in the very first video of it with in the descriptions of the very first videos of those um of those games. I make it clear as to what I'm going to do and what I'm not going to do. I say, hey, in the movie game, you actually don't need to t t uh, collect the treasure chests to get 100. percent 
but they do have bonus features that are potentially interesting. So just keep that in mind. I'll be collecting them anyway, but just keep that in mind. And boom, done. That way everyone's like, oh, okay, you're going to cover the treasure chest? I'm going to watch. You're not? Okay, I'm not going to watch. Because some people might just want to watch that. So just keep keep that in mind. Make make clear as to what you're going to do in each game so people know what to expect. Put it in the description for the playlist. Yeah, that too. That's also important too. Like like if you have a description for if you if you like put put in the description of the playlist that 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 helps too that way people don't have to keep going to the first video to see what you're going to do it's like okay i'll just look at your playlist description oh you're going to cover this okay cool and another thing that's quite important organize your playthroughs please it's quite annoying when you want to watch the next part but you can't because you have to dig through the person's fucking video gallery or some shit and it's like i i, I can't find the next part of this playlist uh of this playthrough i can't find it which is why playlists are oh so important please organize your playthroughs please and if you, and also try to make your each part of your playthroughs uh put separate them in manageable chunks if you can and separate them wisely uh don't like and i did this in the past never again don't like have one video in your playlist where you finish one part of the game but then start another that's that's kind of that's just unorganized like just just partition everything like like if you want if you're going to end a certain section of the game have it end on the video rather than having it but having it continue into another video no just, just separate everything it's just a lot easier to follow your games that way and it's it makes everything easier to digest and follow so just keep that in mind just separate and organize everything well put everything in a playlist so everyone can find your shit and then and then make sure you're doing everything in mean and me in uh manageable chunks just do that it's fine to have really long parts just make sure you just make sure you separate them wisely or you can have many short parts but again just separate them wisely it's not it's honestly just kind of jarring to have a video just end like in the middle of a section and it's it it just feels really weird. Yeah, exactly. And of course, name them carefully. Part 1, part 2, part 3, whatever. Yeah, and that's another thing. Sometimes parts themselves can be separated into parts. I did that myself at one point actually. So Blue Wolf brought up a good point. Like, sometimes part one will be separated into two parts, or even three. And part two will be separated into uh, two parts or three or whatever. How many, however many parts there are. Just keep that in mind. So if you are so if you have a part one that's separated into two parts, you'll have to add a bit more to the tile to make it clear that that part isn't complete. So like part one and then one of two, or part one and then two of two. I have to do this for the movie game in Battle for Bikini Bottom because those games sometimes required you to backtrack to certain areas after you got certain abilities. Well, actually, you didn't have to backtrack if you had enough tokens or spatulas or whatever, but if you wanted to do 100%, you had to backtrack. Um, well, in the movie game, you actually had to backtrack regardless of what you did. It was stupid. But anyway, uh, yeah, just separate, just organize everything, please. Yeah, and it also helps to like have like if you can if you don't if you if you can't that's fine but if you can like put in the title what part you're going to cover like of a game put what you're going to cover like it can say uh call of duty black ops uh cold war best ending or i mean good ending or bad ending or very bad ending or whatever like just put that in the title that way people are like oh you're going to cover this okay cool and it's just easier, like, so that way you don't have to dig through the playlist and see, like, exactly where you, where you were, like, where you last left off or whatever. Like, it just makes it even easier to follow your videos and just saying part one, part two, part three, part four. Like, unless the game's, like, already structured that way, then fine. But, but, like, if you can, just make your tiles as informative as possible. That just makes everything easier to follow and keep track of. So yeah, really good points here. 
Um, and of course, a lot of these tips you'll just pick up naturally as you go along. You'll realize, okay, this is not good. Let me change this. And of course, other tips you'll get pick up from people who are who hopefully give you constructive criticism on your videos. So yeah, basically, just it's 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 all just a matter of just you know making things convenient for everyone else. Like just put yourself in the position of the of whoever's watching your videos. Like put yourself in the audience and and think, hmm, how can I make this ex accessible to everyone? Like just just if you if you use that mindset. It'll make things so much easier. So yeah, just make just separate your walk through, uh, organize and separate things in your walkthrough uh, reasonably. And if you can make the tiles as informative as possible. Now, if you can't put, now if you can't like say like for one like say like there's a really long uh, name for a section in the game and you don't want to put that in the title, that's fine. Um, but preferably put make your tells as informative as possible. But if you have long if you're doing long plays then of course this won't matter. But of course if you're but of course you should organize your long plays too. Make sure they're named reasonably and organized reasonably. Having putting them in the playlist preferably so that way people can, you know, just say, Oh, okay, this is the next long play, this is the next one, this is the next one. So that way you don't have to dig through your entire library of videos. Yeah, exactly. So one example, like you could say Sonic 2006, Sonic Story, Part 1, Soliana, and Wave Ocean. So it's like, okay, so you're going to go into the hub world and then do the first stage. That's, that's what we'd expect. That makes perfect sense. And you could say Part 2, uh, Dusty Desert. And that's what I did with my Sonic 06 video, uh, videos, actually. I actually named, I actually did, like, I believe, actually, I don't remember if I did. I don't think I did. No, never mind. I don't think I did. But, but yeah, that's a good example. Um, really, I mean, it's a lot of it you can just figure out on your own, but just keep these things in mind. Yeah, and for yeah, and for a long play, you could say like, Sonic 2006, Sonic Story, long play. That's fine too. Like, yeah, you can have like many long plays. Like, you could technically do a long play of one segment and then a long play of another segment. Like, Sonic Story, then Shadow Story, then Silver Story, and then Last Story. Or you might clump the Last Story with one of the other three. It doesn't matter. But yeah, basically organize everything. Have reasonable titles. Separate your videos well. Put them in playlists, make your playlists informative, informative make your titles informative, it's whatever. And yeah, like, you, if, it's, there's nothing wrong with wanting to play with the titles a bit, but make sure that they're related to what you're talking about, uh, <laughs> what, what's in the video, please. Like, don't, don't make a stupid title, make, make one that's actually, you can make it, you can make it funny or or you could play with it a bit, but make sure it's actually related to your content, please. Because for one thing, it's potentially misleading, depending on how you phrase your title. And another thing is that it can also be confusing. So again, make sure you select a good title. Okay, um, and the final tip, relax. If you're, I know some people are gonna get nervous when they get in front of a camera or hell, even when they start recording, period. It's okay, it's okay, just relax. Just take it one step at a time. Like when I first started streaming, I actually was a little camera shy, but over time I just started feeling more confident in the camera. Um, of course, there are still those rare moments where I get a bit nervous because I just don't know what to say next, but, <laughs> which actually happened a few times in this presentation, no doubt, but, I actually feel a lot more confident and natural around the camera. So it's just something you get used to. So don't be too hard on yourself if you find that you're just a little too timid at first. Eventually, you'll grow into it. I don't know if it's only uh, three people watching. It might be uh, it's a glitch with the YouTube view count because 
like when I saw that it was only one there were like three or four people commenting so it's just YouTube being stupid Chi don't Chi didn't show his face at first during the streams yeah I didn't show it at first and it was because I didn't really have a webcam at the time and plus I wasn't really ready to show my face but like what within the the first 15 streams like I don't know like around the what 10 what I forgot exactly when I started showing my face but um, I do believe it was during the Sonic 06 live stream or somewhere at some time at shortly after that. So it was within like the first 15 or so streams. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like at first Blue Wolf, you were like a bit nervous, but over time you actually started feeling more, more confident around like with your mic because you know, you were guest commentating my playthrough of the Simpsons in the run. Which, oh, I forgot I even did that. It was fun though, but yeah, not, not like there are some things I did not like about that game, but it was fun though. Uh, but yeah, you, you, um, you, you felt conf more confident over time rather quickly too, which surprised me. Um, so yeah, you get used to it. Now, if you don't ever want to show your face, that's fine. Some people don't want to do face reveals. That's fine. Like, there are reasons for that. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. But I eventually showed my face, and I don't regret it one bit. So, get uh, you'll get used to it over time. I was about to say get used to it. That's not what I meant. <laughs> um, you'll get used to it over time. Oh, yeah, that's the thing, Nime. I would love to have you on, but, you know, we're in different time zones, and it sucks. We talked lots of shit in part one. We did. We did. Well, you know where the game starts getting less interesting after like the third world or so. But anyway. <laughs> Hit and run, I mean. Okay, so that's really all I have to say. So to recap for tips for streaming. Play the fucking game first and don't waste people's time. Uh, make it clear what you're going to cover and what you're not going to cover. Uh, if you're playing a game blind, tell people. Organize your playthroughs reasonably. Use playlists, titles, whatever. Um, and of course, don't be too hard on yourself if, you, if you're not all that confident at first. You'll grow into it. And another thing about part point three that I want to mention, where it says state what parts of the game you're going covering and what you're not going to cover. Um, it's not just... It's not just so people know what to expect. It's also so that you don't waste people's time. Because I was watching this Final Fantasy playthrough once, and this person kept going into the Golden Saucer and winning Chocobo races and getting lots of GP. And he kept doing that a lot and a lot and a lot. And I'm just like, okay, dude, when are you going to do the start with the main story? Because I, I just want to get through this. Because he never told anyone that he was going to do that stuff. Now, if he had told people from the beginning, that would have been fine. But no, he just kept doing that, and it was just a waste of time to me. So I'm like, I'm just going to watch something else. I, this is, I, just, I don't need to watch all this side shit. And if you're going to do a lot of shit like that to begin with, fast forward through it. Please, at the very least, fast forward through it. Either cut it out or fast forward through it. People don't need to be seeing extra shit that's just a waste of time. Please. Like, just, like either cut it out or just fast forward through it. Because, like, it's just annoying having to watch someone do something over and over and over and over and over again. Now, at first I didn't do this because I didn't really have good editing software back then. But over time, I did start doing that in, in old and, in, you know, newer videos where I'm just like, eh, I'm going to cut this part out or fast forward through this. But, yeah, like, just, like, of course, like, just basically put yourself in your audience's shoes. Try not to waste their time. Yeah, that's the thing. If you're going to grind for XP or whatever, or do stuff like that, just do it off screen or fast forward it. And actually, like, my Final Fantasy VII playthrough itself wasn't perfect either, so I'm not going to pretend that mine was great. But at first, I did I did some of the grinding on screen, but I'm like, okay, this is taking too long. So with later parts, I just did that shit off screen. I was like, no, I'm not going to do this on screen. That's just way too much time wasted. I need to do this off screen. 
and the walkthrough ended up being playthrough I should say ended up being better that way and of course yeah you want to test your equipment let me say that too it's important to test your equipment before you stream test your equipment before your stream because your 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 shit could be fucked up and you wouldn't even know it. If you just start streaming, it's like, hey everyone, oh shit, my mic's not even on. What the hell? Or your game audio just cut out and it's like, it's not on. The fuck? Now, usually my streamers tell me when shit like this happens. So, uh, so like I'm like, okay, let me go and fix it really fast. But normally I check beforehand. So. Yeah, just test your equipment, including your mics and your capture cards, whatever. Just test it. So, yeah, another thing. And I know I don't want to sound... I'm not trying to sound hypocritical here. I, 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 I promise you I'm not trying to sound hypocritical. Um, if you're going to stream, don't be like me. Be punctual. And let me just shorten that a bit. Don't be like me to where it's like, I set a time and then it's like, I end up having to do it 30 minutes later. That's not, that's just not very polite or organized or anything like that. So if you set a time, people expect you to stream at that time. Now there are times where of course shit happens. That ha shit has happened to me in the past where I couldn't control it. But more often than not, it's just because I just did not plan my time very well. So, don't be like me and be punctual. Your viewers will thank you for it. Some people are very punctual, I'm not. I know, that's something I struggle with. Okay, um... Don't use Windows Movie Maker. Yeah, Windows Movie Maker was okay at the time, but don't use it. it it's just... It's honestly just outdated as hell. I don't even think anyone uses it anymore. But it did last for a while. Oh, hi, Luis. Um, good, good editing software you would recommend? Sony Vegas is also good. Rather expensive, though, unfortunately. Although there are cheaper options, as well as free options that are great. Uh... Although I've been using Sony Vegas though, so I don't think I can recommend any others at the moment because that I really don't use anything else other than Sony Vegas Pro. Um, but yeah, but yeah, if you can find something that's cheaper and still works quite well, that's fine. There are video there are vi there are video editing software packages that are quite good and that are free or relatively inexpensive. So. Check those out. Okay. Um, okay. So that's really all I need to say. Uh, all I have to say on this. Um, I can't think of any other points to bring up. So now I think we're just going to go into OBS Studio and start recording. Uh, start capturing it. Okay. Uh, let's see. How do I... That's impress. Okay. Um, let me. Where is OBS? I don't. Can I record with OBS? Can I record OBS itself? I probably can actually. I don't know. Let me see. I probably can't, but I don't think I can. I think I have to use something else. Hold on. Uh, display capture. Oh, wait, what if I do display capture? Um, let me see something here. Oh, shit. Okay. Wow. Okay, I guess that works. Now, but that's my whole desktop, though. You know what? Fuck it. I don't care. Let me just... Okay. Oh, wow, that looks... How the hell... Oh, that looks bad. <laughs> that looks bad. OMG. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I was not expecting that. <laughs> wow. Good lord. Okay. It's like... Oh, what if I put myself like... It's probably not going to change anything. Oh. 
I did not think this through. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's like, yay! It's like, I feel like I'm in a, I, mean, I feel like I'm in a cubicle now. It's like everyone's having a little party with their hands. Hey, what? 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, shit. I really want to do a window capture. I never tried it. I never tried it at this point. No, shit. Okay, here, hold on. Hmm. Scheiße. Oh, damn. Oh, wait. I think this works. Does this work? Let's see. Oh, no, that doesn't work either. Damn. Damn. Oh, wait, I think I have an idea, actually. Why don't I just... Oh, wait, no, that's not going to work either. Damn. I have no idea. I have no idea how the hell to record directly from... Oh, shit. I thought I could just, like, record and then do it. No. Shit. Okay, um... Hmm. I know how to use yeah, I know how to use it. I just I just never tried recording directly from it. I'm trying to see if I can do it. Hang on. Uh hmm. Let's see. Shit. Okay. Uh damn. That's not good. Wow, okay. That's embarrassing. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. It's like Blue's like, hey, get back to work. <laughs> uh, hmm. Shit. Well, damn. What if I cover up, like... Well, maybe if I... No, that's still going to present issues. Shit, I don't know. Fuck. Well then. Okay. <sighs> Here, hold up. I don't know. Yeah, it's shit, I don't know. Hmm. How do you make OBS capture itself? I thought it was just a matter of... I wasn't thinking very well. Hmm. Oh wait, I think there's a way to do it, actually. Hold up. Oh. But wait, how'd you... How did he get to that point? What? There's actually a way to stop this. Uh... Hmm. Okay, here. Hold up. This is so embarrassing. Okay. Uh, system options. Huh. Where is it? There's a way to do it, apparently. Uh, hold on. Let me find it. 
because you have to do you have to disable desktop composition whatever that is I don't know what that is though I'm trying to find it why is this hang on hmm Okay. Okay, good, good. I'm just making sure that you guys cannot see what I'm getting what I'm doing right now. What the fuck? Oh my god. Oh. Hmm. Advanced display settings. Nope. Nope. This one? Nope. Damn. Well, shit. Okay. Hang on. Maybe it's different here. How did he get there? Okay, click advanced systems. On the left, then switch to the advanced tab in the system properties dialog box. Under performance, click settings. Oops. Maybe just let me just do this. Let me just be more direct about it. This PC and I think it's properties. Uh, hang on. Okay, and then select the advanced system settings option. Okay, there we go. Okay, awesome. Now, let's see. Uh, advanced, perform, advanced settings, advanced performance settings, okay. Enable, where's the desktop composition part? Oh, where is it? It's not even here. This is weird. Oh. Oops. That's not even an option here. Oh, here, let me just do this. What if I disable Here, let me just, just let me just do that. Maybe that will fix things. Hopefully that doesn't fuck things up. Okay. 
Because that's not even an option. Okay. Now let me see if I what happens if I Nope, that didn't do anything. Well, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I'm trying to figure out how to get this to stop recording itself like that. Uh -oh. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Um maybe it's in the properties. Let's see. Nope. I don't know what damn hmm okay I don't know I honestly don't know this is I don't know why it's doing that huh okay well that's okay I guess I could still work with this it's gonna be weird as hell though it's just just hmm just... okay I have an idea though I have an idea though what if I can make this work I think hmm okay so if to make this work Mm. Shit, no. Hmm. I don't know, honestly. I don't know how. Since you're on Ghost Story Mode of Lights Her Pants, which character should you pick? Sandy, I think. Probably Sandy. Hmm. What if I just disable all of these? Let me just disable all of these. I don't have time to guess which ones work. Let me just disable all of these. Hopefully that doesn't fuck shit up. <sighs> oh, that looks bad. But... Okay, maybe that'll work. No, that didn't do anything. Shit, I don't know. Oh wait, maybe this will fix it. Oh shit. I hope I I probably didn't mute the guest mic. Oh no I did. Okay good. Yeah that my mic should be the only one that's on. Oh there's a way to do this? Okay. I just looked it up. Let's see. If I can't, that's okay. Like, it'll be a bit distracting, but I have no idea how to fix it. Wow, some people are just trolling. I swear to God, no one has a good video on how to avoid this. 
it's just the smear effect is annoying. I, I want to get rid of it. Oh, I see. So if I move it to another display, that can work. Okay. Uh, here. Let me use a different display. I think I use... Okay. Let me use a new desktop. What if that works? Or maybe a new display. Will that work? Hmm. Okay. Uh, here. I'm trying to get this damn thing to work. Hang on. I'm trying to see if... Oh shit, nope, that's not what I meant. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I don't think that'll work though, but we can try. Uh, if I move it here, what does that do? Nope, that doesn't do anything. Okay, um, shit. Wow, well, <sighs> I'm, go I'm just going to come back to that. I'll just come back to that. Whatever. I'm coming back to that. I've wasted enough time. So what I'm going to do is put that back over there. Um, I'll come back to that. So what I'm going to do now is Um, other computers? That means you're a computer. <laughs> okay, so here, you know what? We're just going to come back to that. I'm go I'll come back to that. So right now, we're going to do a little audio test. So, so what I'm going to do is switch between multiple camera, uh, not cameras, multiple webcams, oh, not cam, webcams, <laughs> multiple microphones, and you guys can see what the, you guys can actually hear the quality in these, right? Okay, so, here, let me do this. Okay, so, here, I'll call this one laptop mic test. I'll call this one, hmm. I'll call this one USB mic test. I'll call this one, what else? Wired headset, oops, headset mic test. Just gonna copy that because I'm lazy. Wireless headset mic test, and then XLR microphone. So you all get to hear various, like, and I want you to rate this on a scale of one to ten. So let's see how this works. Okay, so now. I'm going to I'm going to add a bunch of audio sources to OBS and then all you guys have to do is just listen to how these sound and then you can and then you'll hear the the difference in quality the, between all of these. I have all of them plugged in. I just need to activate them. So let me add that. Okay, so let me add another one. Another one. DJ Khaled! <laughs> Poggers. Okay, uh, let's see. Headset mic at that one. And then it's gonna be the Logitech wireless headset. Uh, add another one. So it's gonna be Headset mic two. Uh, that might already be on this one. That one is mic at the front panel. Yeah. Okay. And then 
and then let me let me let me call it shit Mike <laughs> shit Mike so let me just use uh that one Okay, let me turn that off. Okay, and I think that's it. Yeah, so five different mics. Okay, so let's start with the shit mic, right? Okay, <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun. Okay, so here's the laptop test, right? The laptop mic test, I mean. Let me turn my XLR microphone off. Okay, can you guys hear this microphone? How does it sound? How does it sound, everyone? Does it sound great? How is it? I bet it sounds like shit. What do you guys think? How is it? <laughs> I bet it sounds like crap. Oh my god. <laughs> oh lord, okay. Jesus. So that's the laptop mic. I bet you all love that quality. <laughs> I sound weird, don't I? <laughs> okay, so that's the laptop mic. And now let me switch over to the, the USB mic. How do I sound, everyone? <laughs> I'm moving the mic just to make sure. Okay, how do how do I sound now? I'm using the oh shit! I forgot to change this. The okay, now I'm using the USB mic. So, how is that, everyone? How does this sound? How does this sound? <laughs> I bet it sounds atrocious. I bet it sounds really bad. <laughs> oh lord. Yeah, like, this is my USB mic. The one that is like this. <laughs> so, how does this one sound? I bet it doesn't sound very good. It's still bad. <laughs> Holy shit, you're still going? Yeah, maybe I'm still going. I'm still going. I'm doing a little... I'm trying to show people uh, the, how different mics can have different quality. I mean, which they already know. I'm just showing them what they sound like. That white noise sounds odd. Yeah, see, exactly. It just sounds odd as hell. Okay, now let me switch over to the wired headset. Okay, I know you guys are probably used to this one, uh, the second most. The first one you'd be used to, you'd be used to the XLR mic. That's the best one you're most used to. But remember, I used to use this one quite a bit because, <laughs> oh shit, let me adjust that. Okay, because, because my wireless headset was just trash. It was just trash. So. How does this one sound? <laughs> I bet it sounds like really... I bet it sounds so compressed and, and staticky and shit. Well, not that bad, but still noticeably bad. Um, so that's how this one sounds. Oh, shit. I forgot to change the stupid... Okay. Wired headset mic test. So that's the wired headset mic test. That's how this one sounds. I think I prefer the other sound, to be honest. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, this is the third uh, one. 
I probably should have just made this all bulleted, but that's okay. Um, it's so compressed, right? So compressed, it's like, like, it's just so compressed, like, it, you're, like, smashing a bunch of sounds into one. It's like, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. Now, let me try my, now, let me try my wireless headset one. And let me try my wireless headset one. Oh, God. Can you hear this one? Yeah, you should be able to hear this one. Remember the one that beeps a lot? <laughs> the one that beeps a lot? <laughs> oh god, I forgot this one existed. When I pulled it out of the box, it sounded so dusty. I, it, I said it sounded so dusty. No, it looked so dusty. It just looked so dusty. I was just like, wow, I have not used this in a long time. Okay, um, so yeah, that's how the wireless headset sounds. Not perfect, but not... Well, normally it's not bad, but... Like, with the whole beeping shit that happens so often, like, I just, I just couldn't use it, because it just beeped so much. So this is the wireless one. And Jesus Christ. I forgot how I forgot how this one sounded. I said it sounded dusty. <laughs> I meant it looked dusty. It was dusty like. Cause I, because I hadn't used it in such a long time. This one probably doesn't sound very bad. Not as compressed as the wired one. The wired one sounds really compressed. It looks so dusty that it sounds dusty. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Good lord. Okay. But yeah, this is the wireless one. Remember the one that goes beep beep beep. And I had to switch over to uh the a different one which sucked. I had to switch over to at first I had to switch over to like the USB one. And then the wired one. But, yeah, that's how this one sounds. Um, let me switch back to the other mic. <laughs> the, the XLR mic. Okay, and now we're back to this mic. <laughs> oh shit, I forgot to switch the fucking thing. Yeah. Okay, and now we're... Oh. And now we're back to this microphone. So hopefully your ears have not been harmed in the making of this test. Hopefully they weren't harmed while this test was conducted. But yeah, this is how the XLR microphone sounds. And just a lot cleaner than all the others. Like the wired one sounded so compressed. <laughs> yeah, right? Like this one doesn't sound compressed at all. Like it's just so clear. But the wired one just sounds so compressed. Even more compressed than my wireless one. My wireless one didn't sound that compressed. Still compressed, but not that compressed. Um, oh, I forgot to do the webcam mic. I forgot to do the webcam mic. Oh, wow, I forgot to do that. I forgot to do that. That's embarrassing. I forgot to do the webcam mic. How could I forget that? So that means I have six mics, not five. 
Okay, let's try the webcam mic. I completely forgot about the webcam mic. We're back to the best mic, right? <laughs> Here, let me let me do the webcam mic test. Okay. So I have to create another audio source. Um hmm. webcam mic. And we're gonna use the Logitech. Okay. So how does this one sound? I bet I sound really far away. How does this one sound? I haven't used this one in a long ass time, so I don't know how it sounds. But <laughs> this is the webcam mic. That's the webcam mic test. So that's the sixth mic. I need to be more consistent with this. That's the sixth mic. And oh no, 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 no. <laughs> In conclusion, wireless and wired headset with mic are compressed as fuck. They are. They are. They really are. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> the wired headset brought back. The wireless headset brought back memories, right? Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh lord. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> the webcam mic. <laughs> Ew. Let me let me stand closer. How does this sound? How do I sound? <laughs> How do I? S oh my god! <laughs> like yeah, it has an it has a built-in microphone. That's how it sounds. Let me go back. <laughs> it definitely sounds like it's coming out of a webcam. <laughs> It does. Okay, I'll switch back. I will definitely switch back. Ouch, lol. <laughs> so let me put this here. There we go. So let me switch it back to the other mic. Okay, okay. Now. Okay, now we're back to the other mic. Okay, don't worry. Don't worry, guys. I won't assault your ears anymore. I won't assault your ears. <laughs> so we covered... <laughs> so we covered... Yeah, th didn't I mention this earlier? The, the different types of microphones? Yeah, there were six. I don't know how... I, I forgot about the webcam mic. That's how irrelevant it was to me. It was so irrelevant to me that I forgot it existed for all these years. I'm like, oh yeah, it has a webcam. I mean, a microphone. Let me let me show you guys how it sounds. <laughs> so yeah, XLR is the best. It's a fact. Sorry. Now with the Blue Yeti, a Blue Yeti could be... I'm sorry. A, a Blue... I can't speak today. A Blue Yeti microphone could could be comparable to this but at the end of the day xlr will just give you the best sound so team xlr hee <laughs> hee save the worst for last <laughs> use the old backup mic i think i did like this one the the usb one it's called Dynex USB micro. Don't fucking get one of these. It it's just it's 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 out of all of these. It, this one is probably the one that sounds the most compressed. Like, Jesus. But as irrelevant as Sonic Four, yeah. At least Part Two was a little better, but yeah. my ears <laughs> oh what happens if i turn them all out on at once oh no oh no <laughs> if i turn my mics all on at once oh no i'm gonna like make the whole stream explode <laughs> i turn them all on at once uh oh i see i'm gonna blow the <laughs> turn your speakers down because it's all gonna sound very bad <laughs> Oh lord. <laughs> god. Oh god. I'm afraid to try it. Like, if I try it. Oh, oh no. 
it's like okay let me make sure my xlr mic is here and my usb mic is here let me make sure my wired and wireless headset ones are ready i'll speak to them like this <laughs> and i'll put my webcam one on <laughs> oh god <laughs> Everyone's like, no, Chima, don't do it! <laughs> uh, don't worry, I won't do it. Un unmutes everything. <laughs> DBZ's like, do it. <laughs> okay, let me see. Uh, well, I have a lot to unmute. Okay. I'll try to be as silent as possible. I'll try to be as silent as possible before... Here, hold up. Let me just hold them like this. Okay. So, so how, how do I, I sound? sound? Oh, shit! <laughs> oh no! Lord, I bet I sound really awful. Like, mics everywhere. <laughs> oh lord. I just like, turn your volumes down. Turn them all down. <laughs> Time to die. <laughs> oh lord. Okay, I bet I'll, I'll stop assaulting your ears. Okay. Okay, don't worry, don't worry, everything's turned off. There, there, there are echoes. Yeah, so many echoes everywhere. It's like, oh, I know. Let me turn them all back. No, if I do that, I'll trigger Maple. I'm not gonna trigger Maple. I don't want to trigger Maple. <laughs> but yeah, that's how they all sound. Um, yeah, just stick with the XLR, please, Team XLR. So, I don't think I'm... Ten... Or a thousand. I don't know what to give these. I, I know what to give the USB one. I'm gonna give it like a two. It's a two. It's a two. I'm gonna give this one another two. I'm gonna give this one a two. They're all twos. A wired one, a three. Okay, that's a little harsh. Three and a half, no, I'm kidding. A four, and that's being generous. A five, okay, we're done. So, Team XLR, bass boom. <laughs> Turn on all six of your mics. Okay. <laughs> Explosion. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, I just wish I could show you guys, like... I just wish I could show you guys, like... Oh, by the way, the mic stand I have that I have for this it's real it's again it's not very expensive it's like twenty dollars I I don't know why I didn't even include that in the presentation I put down in the description as well I put pretty much everything I have except the Y splitters and the green screen everything else I put in the description I just wish I could like record fucking OBS like I can't is it over can I unmute yes it's over it's safe it's safe, everyone. Don't worry. Move it to another display or minimize it. How do you do that, though? I don't know how to do that.
plus, I said pre plus, press window, shift, left arrow. Oh, window, shift, right arrow. Okay, let's try that. Windows, shift, right arrow. Did that work? That didn't work. Oh, wait, I don't think I did it right. My bad. Windows, Windows, sh oops, shit. That didn't work. That didn't do anything. I tried that. Oh yeah, I don't even have multiple displays, do I? So it really wouldn't matter. <laughs> it's not gonna work if I don't have multiple displays. Oh wait, extend mode. I have to make sure extend mode is enabled. See, that's what I get for not reading ahead of time. Okay, so press Windows P. Windows P. Damn it, Windows P. Why aren't you, oh, there we go. Uh, extend. <clears throat> Oh shit, no, my bad. Okay, there. Now let's try this. It's not working, Windows P. Still not working. I think I need another screen though. That's probably why it's not working. I don't know. Because I saw I saw someone do it like without but on just one screen, but I don't hmm. I don't know. This sucks. I might have to just like do that part separately, like show you guys how OBS Studio works in a separate video because I have no idea how. How to do it here because I don't know why it's not working at all. Wait, what the hell? What the hell did I do? No, that's not it. Yeah, it seems I have to extend the stupid thing, but I have no idea how to do that. Maybe if I do it to my TV, it could work that way, but... No, I forget it. I'm, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I just forget it. Uh, no, it's, it's... It's... It's the window... It's... It's... That's Windows, I mean, like, it's a command, like, Windows and P. See, my sister had dual monitors, so she could do this on hers, but I don't have that. Start setting systems display.
Okay, uh, start. Settings. I don't know. I just, for some reason, can't figure it out, unfortunately. Oh, well, I could always show that later. I don't know why. Like, I feel like at one point I could. It's weird because I do remember being able to record it. Although, I actually, no, I didn't use OBS for that. I used another. I could just use another screen recorder, but I wouldn't be able to use OBS because I'm streaming with it, though. So that wouldn't work. Shit. Um, system. Display. Display. Okay. Display. Um. Okay, that's why. Yeah, I need another display. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, okay, sorry. I don't, like, sorry about that. My internet just cracked out on me at the worst possible time. I think I'm just going to, you know what? I'm just going to have a separate stream where I just cover how to use OBS and shit. Like, instead of just, I'll just do it that way. Because I, I, because this was a bit of a mess. I'm sorry about that. But... But anyway, um, it's getting late anyway, so hopefully you all enjoyed this, though. Uh, yeah, like, I'm sorry about that. I don't know. My internet is just the worst. It just stopped the worst possible time. But um, yeah, that's really it for now. Um, yeah, next time I'm just going to have a video where I just show you guys how OB OBS Studio, uh, works and all that stuff. So I'm going to do like a little walk through there. As soon as I figure out how to have it not do that stupid mirror effect, I was going to do it now, but it's, I'll just save it for another video. That's fine. Um, besides, at least I got the main part out of the way. So... So I'm sorry this was a little disorganized, but hopefully you all found this very interesting uh, and helpful. <sighs> That's my entire presentation, a guide to recording and streaming games. Um, so before I leave, does anyone have any questions? If not, that's fine. Oh, hi, Blue Wolf and Maple. Yeah, my internet was just crapping out on me. 
like it stopped and then it started it's not as bad as it was before in the past but it was just it's still annoying this this ha this still happens occasionally the mics killed the internet that's probably what it was like you know like the mics just went and just completely trashed the internet it's probably what it was yeah just rewatch it there is one part where I fumbled with OBS Studio, so just skip over that. And the part after that where I test all the mics, the part where I, I again, fumble with it a bit, just skip over that too. Uh, anyway, um, that's okay, Maple. At least you showed up. Um, but yeah, that's the end of the stream. Uh, thank you all so much for watching this. Blue Bull sat here the whole time. Yas, Blue. Yas. Thank you. Will all this be on the final? Maybe. Oh, what the hell? What the hell is wrong with my computer? Wait, let me see if it still does that trippy effect thing. It does. Oh my god, it does. It's like, woots, 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 yas, 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 woot, 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 woot. If only I can nay nay. Now watch me whip, now watch me nay nay. Now watch me whip, whip, watch me nay nay. Oh, and that's probably something else I should mention. Like, if you're gonna have a green screen, try not to make your hand go out of the green screen like this. Because then people will be like, because that shit's kind of distracting. Like, I know sometimes you'll have to leave the green screen if you need to go use the restroom or something. But if you do this all the time, people are going to be like, uh, what's happened to your arms? <laughs> but anyway. Yo. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Okay, I'm done. Dance, bitch, dance. Woo, get back to work. Okay, damn, sorry. There will be no bullshit questions like, is she ashy as fuck? Yep. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, thank you all so much for watching this. It was a bit messy, but I tried. <laughs> Hopefully next one will be more organized. Uh, I'm Team Roller 15. You are getting it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Never mind. I should watch Naruto more. Uh, I feel like I should. I feel like it'd be... I would, but the man, anime and the manga are both so... Are both such a slog to get through. Oh my god. But, who knows. Anyway. Um, no, I don't know. We'll see. But... Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this. I'm TeamRoller15. I hope that this stream has helped you. Uh, it wasn't perfect, but I hope it helped you with your streaming journey or recording journey, whatever. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Oh, it's your brother's birthday? Okay. Happy birthday to you, oh, happy birthday to you, oh, happy birthday, dear Blue Wolf's brother, happy birthday to you, oh, happy birthday to you, oh, happy birthday to you, oh, oh. Happy birthday, Blue Wolf's brother. Happy birthday to you. Ooh, ooh. Okay, bye. <laughs> we turning up? <laughs> oh, wow. But yeah, see y'all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.